Welcome in, Brad from College Sports Cast. Welcome, guys. We are here to do our Big Ten 2024 preview show. All right, guys, welcome back. It's College Sportscast. I've got John Hammonds on here with me. What's up, Hammonds? What's up, man? If he can hear me. <laughs> All yeah, right, hear man. You. We are here to do our big preview show. We have been doing all of the power conferences. This is our Big Ten show. If you are with us um, on Facebook, you can help support us by sending stars, or you can subscribe to our page now for 99 cents a month. It does allow you to get your own subscribers page, um, and I do post things on it as well from time. So both of those help us earn money to make more content, and we would appreciate it, guys. If you're with us on anything other than Facebook, we're working towards that. YouTube, um, the Real Fresh channel, there's some of the things that we are on. So um, we are working towards those on YouTube and the Real Fresh channel as well. So, all right, 18 teams um, to talk about here this year on the Big Ten show. Um, these things keep expanding and getting bigger and bigger, these conferences do, and these shows get longer and longer and longer. So we're going to jump into it. The first one we're going to do, guys, is Illinois. We do these in um, alphabetical order. So the first one we're going to jump into is Illinois this time around. All right. So I'm going to start this by saying this with Illinois. Illinois has only had four winning seasons since 2001. Four. And that was winning. And that season. was, and that was the year they they went to the Sugar Bowl and and with Ron Turner, um, where they was ten and two. Um, yes, two thousand one. They were ten and two. Ron Turner. That was the big year. They went ten and two. Went to the Sugar Bowl in two thousand one. Since that season, Illinois has only had four winning seasons. Now Brett B. Bielema has one of them in twenty twenty two. Last year, they kind of fell back a little bit. What do you mm -hmm. think here about Illinois? Nine, for me, it's like, you know, nine bowl appearances in the last 31 years to me is, is not, not a good thing. Like, Northwestern has gone to 11 bowl games in the last 16 years. Um, and, and I know. I mean, I if you look, you think about Illinois and you think about about like ground and pound and football stuff, but if you look at the last 20, 30 years, they really haven't been doing a whole lot in you know um in Champaign, to be quite honest with you. I mean, you know, last year, John, they lost to Purdue badly. Um, they lost double digits to Nebraska last well, year. I mean, and, and here's my well, thing. Nobody's wanting you to go to the college football playoff. You know what I'm saying? Like, just go to a bowl game. Don't. You I'm know, sure their fans, their fans want the. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like beat Purdue, like beat Nebraska. You know, you can't lose to Nebraska, a team that has underwhelmed since 2001. Um, I think that was the year that. Nebraska football pretty much died when they lost to Colorado that year. And then they went on to lose to Miami in the national championship. But like you can't you can't continue to do the same things over and over again and expect results. Like you you've got to improve. You know, one thing that he has improved on, Brett Belima, he's improved the line play um since he's been there. Um now they they went out and got some receivers. They got the old Miss so, receiver. You know, let's let's dig into let's dig into their offense. You know, 
kind of quickly here. You know, even though I said they had a down season, kind of fell back, got beat by Purdue, got beat by double mm-hmm. digits to Nebraska last year, they actually finished third in the Big Ten in overall offense. Yeah, but but that wasn't the problem. Last year. They had 23 turnovers last year. Um, turning the ball over hurt Illinois' offense more than anything. And to me, that that's that's a problem. You know, when 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 you're turning the ball over consistently, you're you're putting your defense in a bad spot. You're you're making the defense having to work all the time, in which the defense wasn't bad either. They just could never put it together consistently. And and I think that's been a major issue with Illinois in the last three to four years. And, and like I said, the line play, he's went out and got got some guys, you know. You know, the line play improved. You know, he got the wide receiver, the Franklin kid from Ole Miss. I think that will help a little bit. They did lose two of their top wide receivers from a year ago, which I think that will hurt a little bit. But they did go into the portal and they kind of dove in and and got some guys to maybe help. They they are bringing back Pat Bryant, who led the team with seven touchdowns on, on the wide receiver. And like you said, they went out and got some guys there in the wide receiver room as well. So, I mean, quarterback play. I mean, do you see it being any better? Because, I mean, Altmaier last year had 10 interceptions and he missed the last three games. Could it get any worse? Could it get any worse? (laughs) I mean, mean, it's just (laughs) – I mean, it's it's – it's got to be better than it was a year ago, you know, and not even a year ago, maybe two to three years. Like now I will say they had the real good 2022 team. Um, that was a pretty good team, but other than that, they've just been kind of subpar. One of the winning seasons was 2022 and a whole lot of that was defense. Yeah. Um, defense. You know, they had some pretty good mojo on defense in 2022. Um hmm you know, but last year they kind of slipped from that um, and, and didn't quite have the defense that they had in 2022. So, you know, do you think linebackers, you know, the back, the the uh, safeties, and do, you know, the, do you think they will be any better this well, year I mean, on defense? I mean, I think they have to. I mean, up, can they come up with some? Well, I mean, they lost two of their top guys in the secondary. Devin Witherspoon, which he was a top pick in the, the draft. Um, they, and they lost Sidney Brown. Um, but they did get Miles Scott back. They got Xavier Scott back. Um, so those are some guys that can, you know, help with that secondary. They do get Zachary Toby back. They get Tyler Strain, um, which they have experience. Uh, the biggest thing for me with Illinois – a year ago was, you know, they gave up almost 200 points. They gave up 24 points or more nine times. And it, it, it wasn't nearly as good as it has been. Um, and I think the defense is going to have to get their, their mojo back and We're getting close, Will. And getting back to um, playing Illinois football. All right. So a key to the season for them this year. I mean, I know their offense has got to work some stuff out um, as far as the turnovers and stuff, but I think they have got to get the defense working again like they did in 2022 if they're mm-hmm. going to have that kind of a season. I think they got to stop the run. They got to, you know, they, they've got to get their defense um, stout again in that conference if they're going to have, a, you know, an eight, nine win season. And that's an if. Yeah. Um, top transfer in. I'm going to go Ole Miss wide, wide receiver, Jashari Franklin. Like, when he was at UTSA, he might have been one of the biggest wide receiver threats in, in, in college football. Um, I think he was the biggest get um, in the transfer portal. But I think Terrence Brooks, the cornerback junior, is most important. Um, he's from Texas. All 12. Terrence Brooks is another one. Yeah, yeah, all big 12. Yeah. I think he will help that defense and those guys in the back end. 
Yeah, and key players, I mean, Xavier Scott, and that safety that I was talking about, Miles Scott, they're, you know, they're, they, they, are, they both play safety. They're juniors. I think that's two of their better players on this team. Um, and then Luke Altmeyer has got to come in. You know, he was at Mississippi, transferred, um, transferred in there. And like I said, last year he had 10 interceptions and didn't play the last three games. So, you know, he needs to cut some of that out and, and play like he did when – uh, he was with Lane Kiffin a little bit more. So that's some of my key players there. Uh, what do you have for a key game? I know that this is not going to be <laughs> popular, but I think Eastern Illinois. And, and I say that because they got in the brat, they got Kansas at home, which will be after the open date. But – then they play Central Michigan at home. Then they play at Nebraska and at Penn State because it, if you can win that first game, the Eastern Illinois game, you can maybe set yourself up for, you know, a decent season. You know, you beat Kansas, you you pretty much go 2-0 and and maybe Central Michigan. But Nebraska is going to be much improved this year. That's why I say – you got to win these early key I games. I actually think it might be that Nebraska game, to be quite it's honest gonna, with you. It's, um, it's going to be because they, they miss Ohio State. Um, now, they do play Oregon. They play at Penn State, um, which is going to be a tough game. But at the same time, I think you got to win that early. See, here's my thing. you got to win the early parts of the schedule because when you get towards the back end, there, there, there are certain games where – if you don't win those early games, you're not going to get to a bowl game. And, and that's where I, I feel like Illinois has yeah. to – I mean, I agree. Let's look, at the, let's look at the schedule real quick. They start out with Eastern Illinois' open date, home against Kansas, Central, Mich Central Michigan at home, at Nebraska, at Penn State, open date. Then they get Purdue at home, Michigan mm -hmm. at home, at Oregon, Minnesota at home, open date – they have three open dates. All right. Anyway, okay. Michigan State at home, at Rutgers, and at Northwestern. Um, you know, so that's their uh, a look at their schedule. They are missing Ohio State, USC, Washington, Wisconsin, a few teams out of the Big Ten that they are missing on that schedule. Um, I have their over and under set at six wins. Um, do you think they can make a bowl game and get to the six wins? I think they can. I mean, I, mean, like, I think they likely think wins they, is probably Central Michigan, Eastern Illinois. Then you then you got the the fifty fifty game. Do it home. The Minnesota, I think it's at home. Um. You're going to have to win a few on the road. You're going to have to probably go to Nebraska. You're probably yeah. going to have to go and to Purdue. Purdue. Well, no, Purdue's at home. Um, you're probably going to play. You're probably going to have to get that Michigan State game, which Michigan State's going to be much improved. They're going to have to steal a couple of those road games, I think, to get to a bowl game. So, do you think they go? They fall short. Do you think they're five, or do you think they can get to this? Six I think minutes. it all depends. I think it all depends on if they can steal one of those road games and and, and get that six win. But I, I'm going to give you know their the over and under for six. I think I think they get to a bowl game, but I, I just don't think that's good enough for Illinois. I just don't. Especially the last what three years. All right, all right, we're gonna. Yeah, we're going to move on to Indiana. Um, Indiana is under a new coach, and let's just say they are pretty much James Madison now. <laughs> so they hired James Madison's coach, and he is in his first season, of course, and they've got quite a few James Madison transfers as well mm -hmm. from that team last year. Um so, you know, Indiana is another team just to give you 
They have three winning seasons in the last 30 years. Three in the last 30 years. Can this guy get it done at Indiana? I mean, he, I mean, they up, he, they, you know, James took James Madison from uh, 2A and brought them up, and they had a great year last year. Can this guy get it done? I mean, not this year, but can he get it done? I think he can. You know, he took James Madison to 19 and four over the past, what, two years? Um, and, and he finished last year ranked. Yeah. And now, you got to think though. They're going from that league to the Big Ten, right. which is a little, which is which is a little bit difficulty. Yeah. But I feel like Absolutely. you know this. I feel like this guy's earned the benefit of the doubt. I think he's a good coach. Um, Kurt, for me, Indiana is not a bottom feeder. Um, I'm not sure how he pronounces his last name, but Signetti. I think it's. Sign- um. I, I don't think Indiana is a bottom feeder because you got to look back a couple years back. They beat Penn State um, during the COVID year. Um, they won some key games. You know, they had a couple teams in the top. One of their winning seasons was the COVID Top year. three in the um, Big Ten. They had a couple of the top three teams in the Big Ten on the ropes. Um, and let's not forget that they used to have Michael Penix Jr. that – eventually went to Washington and played for a national championship. So it's like – it's. I, I look at these other teams and I think, well, you know what, they're bottom feeders. But I don't look at Indiana that way. I think Indiana has always had a stable program, even in the days when they had Antoine randall They had a bunch of guys that were really good football players. Alex Smith back in the day at running back. So um, I think this is an underrated team that everybody's kind of not really talking about. And, and I think they can do some things. So James Madison's leading receiver, um, Elijah Surratt, um, 82 catches, almost 1,200 yards, had eight scores, is there. Their top tight end, Zach Horton, is there. I mean, they brought over, had 26 catches, eight touchdowns last season, the tight end did. I mean, they brought over some pieces um, from James Madison. And they, did. they got a really good quarterback. They did. As well. The thing that they brought the in that gets, a good the thing, that, the thing that gets me is, you know, they lost to Illinois last year, um, Michigan State, Purdue by like a total of like eight or nine points. Um, lost to a really good Louisville team by seven. You win three or four of those games and, and you're probably going to a bowl game. Um, it, it, it's sort of like if you did that and if you did this. Curtis, Curtis Moore. Quarterback. Yeah, um, you would have had a little bit more chances to, to do some things. Um, and they people don't realize this. There's a, they have an offensive coordinator named Mike Shanahan, and it's not the same Mike Shanahan. Yeah, the, yeah. no, 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 not Mike Shanahan. No, not no. that Mike but Shanahan. His name no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. It, it, that's that's his name. So, um, so they brought in three. Probably new starters on the offensive line um, in the transfer mm-hmm. portal as well. So just mm-hmm. to you know, talk about a couple of them are from James Madison. Um, mm-hmm. So it's going to be interesting to see if these guys who were like eleven and one last year um, can come into the Big Ten and do anything, um, you know, to make Indiana competitive. Competitive, I guess you could say. Well, um, because. And, 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 you look at the defensive side, like last year, James Madison to they was were fifth, fifth in the James was fifth Madison in the was fifth in run. the nation. Yeah. Yeah. They, they was number one against in the, the country yeah. in, ta- in tackles for loss. Um, so they're gonna get some guys in there yeah. that are that that get some pressure. Um, you know, James Carpenter and sixth in sacks. Yeah, and, and yeah. James Carpenter was one of those guys. He was one of their best tackles, um, and he I think he led the country um, in tackles. Um, no, 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 no. I was wrong on that. I think he was in the top 10 or 15, but um, Mikhail Camara was, was a top the top person. He was. Um, C.J. Yeah. West, C.J. Yeah. West, the 315-pound 
315 pound guy. So, um, and but I think their biggest strength is in the secondary. Um, you know, D'Angelo Pons might be one of the best cornerbacks in the country that nobody really has mentioned as of late. Um, you know, Sean Asbury um, will play safety. He's from Old Dominion. Um, so they're going to have some guys, you know, step up in that secondary and make some noise. I mean, they revamped everything. New coach, lots and lots of new players here. So, I mean, this one's – they're, they're kind of hard to – to judge and a lot of these guys are coming from smaller James Madison and Old Dominion and Max schools and you know I mean so it's hard to judge exactly what this team is going to do in the Big Ten I mean you know so but with a new coach new system they are upping what they have been the last few years to be quite honest because they've struggled big time so my key to the season um I'd have to say stop the run. You know, this is more about Indiana than I think than it is. Um, we know more about James Madison than I think because you can do all that and whatnot where you was at last year, but everything started with stopping the run at James Madison. That was the, yep. the idea. That was the identity. And, and they, they did a pretty good job. At- um, you know, right now. They they only allowed I think more than a hundred rushing yards, but they did have that game against Air Force where they just got ripped apart, um, and that was unfortunate because that was at the point where the the, the coaching towards the end of the year. So um, I think that is the biggest key to me for the season. Yeah, is I think I, I agree with you on that. Stopping the run and, and getting it together. Um, you know, so who's some of your key players here? I mean, I already mentioned um, Curtis Rourke coming in. Um, I think Ohio Curtis Rourke Rourke is, is um, the Ohio transfer. I think he's a really mobile guy, talented. Um, he, yeah. he's a pro prospect, um, right? I, I don't think he would be, I think he would be good at anywhere you put him at. Um, not just in James Indiana, Carpenter, Elijah Surratt, some of these that we already, uh, Camara. Kind of went over, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, are some of the are some of the key players there? All right, mm-hmm. key game. I think it's Maryland because you got FIU, you got Western Illinois. You play at UCLA early. You play Charlotte, which Charlotte's going to be much improved. Um, they play Maryland at home, at Northwestern open date, Nebraska at home, Washington at home, at yeah, Michigan Maryland State. Game that- the Maryland game is at home too. Yeah, yeah, at Michigan State, yeah. Michigan at home, um, open day. Then they go to Ohio State, and then they play the the annual rivalry game, Purdue. Uh, <clears throat> I think it's the Maryland game because you you win that game, you're five and zero oh going to Northwestern, and, and you pretty much change the directory of the yeah. season. And, and you got to win at UCLA to be five. Well, you UCLA, UCLA to be well, UCLA is going to be tough too. But I think that Maryland game is, 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 to me is a uh, is the kicker. I think because I think that's what separates you having a really good year or not. Okay, because yeah. I've got their win total set at five and a half, John, five and a half. So if they're under, they don't go bowling. If they're over, they do do go bowling. So. You already kind of went through their schedule. I got them at seven. Where do you think they you see? Them? I, got, I got them at seven. I think you think they can get to seven. I think they're going to have a bounce back year. I do. I, I, I do. I think he's going to bring his identity to, hey, to Indiana. Season. They've only had three in thirty years. They haven't, and and I think this is the year that they're going to. Now I'm not going to say they're going to go to the Big Ten championship, and you know tear it up. I'm just saying, you know, I think they're going to be much improved and they're going to get back to respectability with, with this new coach from James Madison. Okay. All right. We are going to move on to Iowa. And the first thing I want to say about Iowa is this. We all make fun and talk about the offense at Iowa and we make jokes and all this stuff. And we talk about, you know, them and, and have a little fun with them. But, John, 
how many teams would love to have 10 win seasons almost every year? How many power conference teams would love to have 10 win seasons almost every single year? I mean, well, for the last five years, they've won 10 games. And another key fact that nobody knows is they've been in two of the last three Big Ten championships. Exactly. They've been in two of the last three Big Ten championships. Now, that was divisions. I get it. And there's no longer divisions. But where and, they and, are now. And, and I'll even go as far as saying this. And I know Iowa fans will like this one. Um, Iowa State's never had a double-digit win season. Their rival. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I I shot some pepper sprays at, at Iowa Hawkeye, Iowa State Hawk, Cyclones. So, um, I mean, listen, I've made I mean, fun of their offense too, winning games seven to six and stuff. I, I'm not going to sit here and act like I haven't done it as well. I have, but in all reality, there are 30 power conference teams who would love to win 10 games a year. Because I won't be honest with you, John. Now that it's a 12-team playoff, you get 10 wins and you're going to get into the college football playoff a, half the time, at least. A lot, it'd be a lot easier now that, that you can do it. A so, lot. Um, yeah. The offense, to me, the offense is going to score. They're going to try to do the forward pass. <laughs> I make a joke about it all the time, like, but – I mean, they brought in Tim Lester. He's the new offensive coordinator. I think he'll get they it going. Do, they uh, do bring in Tim Lester, and they also they have Cade McNamara coming back from injury. Well, and they did get Northwestern transfer Brandon Sullivan. I think he'll he'll he's the backup to um, McNamara. If, if he goes down, I think they got a little extra um, benefit of having him in the in the in the quarterback room. Um, Luke Lachey is going to be one of their their targets. The tight end, I think, um, he has a really chance to emerge um, at That's Iowa. One of the top tight ends in the country, to yeah. be honest, um, I think so. The Iowa offensive line, to me, um, has always been the biggest thing, but it it just hasn't been. Oh, the last couple of years, it's just not been Iowa football. Um, you know. They get Connor Colby, um, Logan Jones. Um, but to me, the pass protection has got to be a little bit better. Um, you you can't let a lot of these teams, like these FCS teams, come into your building and dominate you up front like some of these teams have done recently. Like, yeah. you know, the 3-2 three, two, three, two game a year ago. Was it a year ago? Maybe two years ago? Was It, it was a year yeah. ago, wasn't it? It was last year. Um, the no, three two game, two it was two years ago. The three two yeah. game, like, put some points on the board, improve your line. Like, and I, and I think yeah. they'll do that this year. All right. So the Iowa defense is going to be top. They're always top in the country. I mean, they're almost always in the top 10 just about every single year. It seems like the Iowa defense finished seventh in the nation last year. I mean, and they do this almost every single year. Now, I will say this. I don't think their pass rush was quite as good last year as they usually are. Um, so, you know, maybe they can improve on that this year with their pass rush. Uh, mm -hmm. But outside of that, I mean, I think they're, they're defense, really good. They're linebacker. They're play. linebacker. Maybe one of the best in the country. Jay Higgins and Nick Jackson. Um they don't miss. Like they're probably the best to me, they're probably the best linebacker tandem in the in the Big Ten. Um I was I mean, always they may, been, they may be some in the country. Like I was always been predicated on, you know, stopping the run, playing really good press coverage, um, playing good coverage in the back end. With their with their secondary, they've had a, a few top guys in the secondary go 
in the you know top rounds in the NFL draft. So the linebackers, they're, they're, so they're not limited. So they're not limited defensively. Um, if their offense could keep them in rhythm, and they can make score, basically. I mean, honestly, that's how they've done it. That's how they win the, in games the defense, and, and the defense have, can you win. know a very little offense. And the defense could, you know, maybe on top of that, in many years, John, their defense scores points for them. They're opportunistic, and they, you know, they score touchdowns. They actually score points for them a lot. The defense, and, and, so, and I think, I think if I was scores more, I'm not saying more, more like. 14, 21 points. I'm saying if they give them a chance to let the defense do their thing, I think Iowa would have a more, lot more chance at winning more games. And the offense to me is, yep. well, All right. that's the my key, that's key to the, the season. My key to the season is this. They've got to convert some third downs on offense. Yeah, that, I mean. I mean. They wasn't even 30% last year. It was 29 last year. Yeah. I said they wasn't even 30% on converting third downs last year. So, yeah. the, you know, converting third downs and keeping their offense on the field and not tiring out that defense quite so much, they've got to improve converting on third downs. My key, my key player, yes. um, I feel like it's Cade McNamara. I think he's got to stay healthy. I think he's got to, you know, stay upright. I don't think yeah. he, he – you just got to stay healthy for 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 me, for Iowa to have a really good year. Um, and they're going to – you know, I mean, with Brendan him – Sullivan gonna... could possibly step in. But, I mean, mm -hmm. they need McNamara to do something. They do. That, to me, that's that's their key to the year, I think, to the season, in my opinion. All right. So, key game. I think it's the Washington game. I'll tell you which I'm one gonna... I think it is. I've got, think... I've got Washington October the 12th. Mm -hmm. Washington October the 12th. That's what I have. Now – they play other games that are important as well, mm -hmm. but that game is at home. Um, and taking a look at their schedule, um, just to give you a little rundown here, their schedule, they start out with Illinois State at home, Iowa State at home in the rivalry, Troy at home, at Minnesota, open date, Ohio State at Ohio State, Washington at home, which is the game I mentioned, at Michigan State, Northwestern at home, Wisconsin at home, at UCLA, open date, at Maryland, and then they finish Nebraska at home. Um, a couple of few teams that they miss, they miss Michigan, Oregon, Penn State, USC. I mean, their schedule – you know, if things go right and they figure out a little bit of offense, John, could this team sneak into the college football playoff? I'm just throwing it out there, guys. I mean, they've won 10 for the last five, at least 10 for the last five years. Now, I did set their win total at eight and a half, but I don't think it's unrealistic to say that this team couldn't get to 10 wins. And at 10 and 2, could they sneak into the college football playoff? I'm just saying, I know nobody is picking them, including I myself. It, I did not pick them either. I think it all boils down to that Washington game to me. Um, because in between there, you, you play Ohio State and – which you got, I think I mean, you got. Let's be honest. That's probably their only likely loss is the Ohio State game at Ohio State. Well, and, and the at Minnesota game is is not as, it's not tough, but it's 
even in the Big Ten, it's challenging going on the road. Anytime you go on the road, it's challenging. So, um, but I do think they win that game. Um, it's possible. <sighs> I still think I'm. I'm going to call them at nine wins, and that they and that they don't get in. But I'm just saying it's possible that this team could sneak in. Because they don't get Penn State, they don't have Michigan, they don't have USC, they don't have Oregon. If we're being fair, I think I the mean, Ohio State, I think the Ohio State game is pretty key too in that regard, because you don't want to lose Washington and that well, game. I picked and, the Washington game because I think the Ohio State's a likely loss, and that Washington game's home. If they can get that game. I think they might have a chance at 10 wins. But another thing on that, they do get Ohio State at home, so in Happy Valley. So that's yeah. We are Penn State. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna move on to Maryland. Maryland is our next team that we're gonna talk about in. Maryland, unlike these other teams that I just mentioned, three years in a row have had winning seasons. They have. Three years in a row. Now they have a new coach. Uh, but they are coming off of three years in a row of winning seasons. Uh, so, John, first-year coach here, I mean, do you think they have some – I mean, I, I feel like they have a few pieces to – maybe back up another winning season. I'm not saying they're going to make a ton of noise here, but I think they could maybe have a winning season. What do you think? First-year coach, did you just say Matt Lossley has been there three years? Okay. I'm sorry. I was thinking they changed coaches. Oh, no. You you had me. You was, you was thinking about Randy Edsall, um when he was there. Um, you just had me confused for a minute. Yeah. I think it's possible. Yeah. Um, you know, they got enough experience to be to get there. Um, the schedule to me isn't all that bad, and we'll get to that. Um, I think, you know, offensively, um, yeah. you know, last year they scored the most points since 2010. Um, Tonga Valoa is gone. Um, Billy Edwards Jr. is probably going to be the brother. Be the, yeah, um, will most likely be the the new um, <laughs> quarterback. Um, now MJ Morris from NC State, he's the transfer. He's going to be pushing for that job, I think. Um, the receiving core is loaded. Um, Ty Felton, Caden Prather. Um, there's plenty of depth in that wide receiver room um, to make some noise with the right quarterback. Um, and that's not to mention the offensive line because they went totally berserk on the offensive line with the portal. Um, you know, they got the Kyle Long, Connor Fagan. They're trying to get a better um, offensive line. They got um, yeah. Josh Kaltenberger from Purdue They're at center. Um the the depth is kind of young, but they're they're very inexperienced. But I think you know that that'll help along the way um, in in growing in these games. Um, you know, last year the running game just really didn't um, do what I thought they would do at Maryland. But they got good backs. You know, they got Roman Hemby, um, Hemby back, um, Kobe McDonald. Um, so. I want the running game to get back to, to where it needs to be. That's fair enough. On the defensive side of the ball, I mean, they did allow fewer than 300 points last year for the first time since 2010. Um, so they had some moments, but then they also had moments where, you know, it seems like they couldn't stop anybody either. So. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do think it was a little better last year than what they had been on the defensive side of the ball. Well, and they and they created, 
I think, 17 turnovers. So they yeah. was they was doing, they was doing some good things too. So um, for me, that's the key to my Maryland season. Um, the linebackers know, have some experience, you know, are coming back. Um, you know, on this on this team, and you're right, they had 17 uh, interceptions last year, a slew of big plays, you know, on the defensive side of the ball. So, so you know, if they could continue that, and like I said, I mean, they had their moments last year. They flashed some some moments on the defensive side of the ball. Well, I mean, everybody that's cares about one of my keys right. to be. Honest. Well, everybody is wants keep taking to, the ball, keep taking the ball away. Everybody wants to create turnovers, but if you're a team like Maryland, you know you your your margin of error is really low against decent Big Ten teams, which you gotta you gotta make plays when when they count. And I think that that needs to happen for Maryland to, I think, have success this season. Who do you have as a key player? I think it's, you know, the quarterback position. Um, there's two there, I think. Billy Edwards Jr., MJ Morris. Um, yeah. Maryland's coming off of three straight 2,000 yard passing years um, since not getting that in 2013. The offense, to me, has to still be explosive. And I think that starts up front with the quarterback play with either. Um, the transfer from NC State or, or Billy Edwards Jr., which he stepped in um, the last two years and did a pretty good job um, backing up Tungvaloa. Right. All right. Key game mm. for Maryland. That's tough. That's tough because so, in that middle we'll, they got we'll take, I'll take a look at it. I'll take a quick look at their schedule, and then you tell me what you think their key game is here after I take a look at the schedule here. But they started home against UConn, Michigan State at home, at Virginia, Villanova, at Indiana, uh, open date, Northwestern at home, USC at home, at Minnesota, open date, at Oregon, Rutgers at home, Iowa at home, and at Penn State is how they close the year. Um, they do miss Michigan, Ohio State, Washington, um, Nebraska, Wisconsin. So there's a few teams that they miss. I, key game for me out of this, I mean, you could say the Michigan State or Northwestern game at home, but I'm going to say at Virginia because Virginia shouldn't be that great. And you can't mm -hmm. go to Virginia and lose. and lose at Virginia. I think that you're I think that's, I think that's fair, season. but I, I think the Northwestern game is is crucial because if you get that game, you're six and zero oh with a USC team coming in, and you might have a special season on the horizon. And and USC well, bringing in that Virginia game. Well, and you know, and and, and USC coming in. in. Well, and yeah, I know you got to go to Indiana, which is tough because um, they'll be much improved, like we just talked. But I, I, but I still think that was Northwestern game's key because I think they're, you know, you go into that USC game and you're six and zero, oh, and USC coming in, you know, their first year in the Big Ten big opportunity to do something on national television like you might you could have a special year okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna raise the bar here at maryland i'm going seven and a half wins i'll go even higher i'm gonna go eight because i think there's okay. there's i think there's eight wins on this schedule for them to get at least a decent bow game it's gonna be telling here early with some of these games, the Michigan State game at Virginia, um, is, you know, it's going to be pretty telling here early, I think, for them to be able to get eight wins. So, mm -hmm. um, 
You got to win those. We'll see. You got to win the freebie games. Like you can't, you can't just go in and expect thinking you're going to win those games and lose them. All right, we're going to get to the big house. Oh, we're going to the big house. Are you going to? Are you going right. to let me go? Are you going to let me go first? Because I told you I was going. To, I was going to say my. Um, yeah. So we're time. we're going to the big house here. So. All right, go on. We're going about with we're Michigan. I'm gonna give you my hot take. Um, you. And then I'm gonna let Brad kind of go off from there. Michigan does not repeat as champions, and they do not get back to the college football playoff. I to be honest with you, John, I'm with you. I have picked my preseason college football playoff teams. I do have them as honorable mention on the outside looking in. I just do not think offensive wise, I think defensively this team still has some star power. Um, very, very good. Outside of, outside of Donovan Edwards at the running back position. I think there's some question marks on the offensive side of the, the ball here. Um, Quarterback. Quarterbacks you know, have some questions. Michigan, Harbaugh, Harbaugh had kind of built this team up. He had some question marks, and then about three years ago, he started beating Ohio State and getting there and kind of gradually got to where they went and won the title last year. Of course, he moves on to San uh, – I almost said San Diego Chargers – Los Angeles Chargers. Chargers. <laughs> I'm an old school guy. I still think of them as San Diego. I'm sorry. But Chargers, he moved on to the Chargers in the NFL. Um, and I think there's some question marks here around uh, their their new coach. What do you think? I mean, he's a, he's a, new, he's a new coach outside of filling in or Harbaugh a few few times last year. And I, I think, you know, there, there's question marks that, like you said, offensive line, um, quarterback play. Now, I, there, there's no denying with this Michigan team. They they have probably the best running back in the country lining up in the, in the backfield for them. Um, and that's not the slight. The other ones like Ollie Edwards and and all, all those that are really good. But I feel like Donovan Edwards is probably the best running back in the country. Um and and I think they'll they'll do good with that. But for me, Michigan last year won with defense and very good quarterback play with JJ McCarthy. And I think that's gonna take a step down. I think Michigan is more near the pack than they are with the contenders. And I know that's a hot take, and I know people's going to say, well, you don't think Michigan can do this. You, they play three of the top four preseason top 25 teams. Um, You know, they play Texas right out of the gate at home. We're going to find out pretty quick. With Texas. Yeah. You're, you're going to find out quick for this the Michigan. Listen, guys, the offensive line is starting over, basically, on this mm -hmm. offense. So we're talking about the offense. I mean, that's a huge blow to any offense when you are replacing your offensive line. And when you have that plus the quarterback and there's some question marks here at the quarterback, I, you know, I just – I feel like the running game will be there. More than likely, the running game with Donovan Edwards is still going to be there. Um, Mullings behind him. I mean, the running game is probably still going to be there now. And I say probably because of the offensive line, not because of the backs. The backs are good, but when you're replacing that offensive line, you just never know. I mean, you know, so all of that worked perfectly last year. And a lot of that is gone. So that's where I'm at with them. Now on the defensive side of the ball, John, they're still they're still really, really stout on the <laughs> defensive side of the ball. I mean, 
when you got guys like Will Johnson at cornerback, you got Mason Graham, you got Kenneth Grant, um, you got Josiah Stewart at linebacker, you got Makari Page at safety, Ernest Hosman at linebacker. That's not even to mention Rod Moore at safety, which he was injured. Like right. Michigan's defense is legit. Like they're good. I mean, they may have the best secondary in the country. They do, and, and that's why I say the key player for them um, is, you know, uh, Mason Graham up front. I think he's going to guide that team. He's going to be a veteran leadership on that team. And I think that front four to me is probably the best in the country, and, and that's – that's why I say the secondary is that good as well. And that's why I say the key of the season is Will Johnson. Will Johnson might be the best cornerback in the game. And I and I know there's a guy out west named Travis Hunter. I'm fully aware of that. And Hunter's great. I'm not saying he's not. I said maybe he may wind up being the best cornerback in the country. Might be the best cornerback off the board when it comes to the pros next year, because I yeah. mean, if you look at his intangibles, what he does, how he changes the game. You know, last year he changed two or three games for Michigan, changed the outcome of the games. Like he, he's he's the real deal, and, and Michigan's defense is is always going to be there, and that's why I think the key of the season is their offense. Like now, I'm going to say this. Their schedule sets up good for them. We'll, we'll get to but that. We'll talk about the schedule here. That's part, that's part of what my key of the season is. And like yeah. you said, we'll get to it. But it sets up good for them to at least challenge for the playoff. Uh, my key to the season is replacing is replacing J.J. McCarthy. Yeah. I think that's, that's the key to this season. I think Orgy will – Because J.J. McCarthy – Ran this offense so smoothly last year, and losing him and not really having any experience and knowing exactly who's going to step in and that kind of stuff. I mean, it could be, you know, they, they've had a competition, you know, it could be dicey here on the offensive side of the ball. So, my key is running the offense and replacing JJ McCarthy. That's well, my key. And I, th I think another thing, too, Orgy will be able to run the ball a bit more than um, J.J. McCarthy. He'll be able to do a little bit more things with his leg. Um, so. Yeah. I, I agree with you. I think he will. But McCarthy was the key that started the engine last year mm -hmm. for this well, and you and you had one of the best right, defenses. So, you had one of the best defenses in the country behind him. So, right. Who's your key players on this Michigan team? I know we've already mentioned a bunch of them. I, so. I, I, I mentioned a bunch, and I think Will John um, is one. Mason Graham. There, there's Will a few Johnson. on the. Yeah. You know. So, my key game. Right. Um, oh, key game. Has to be Texas. I know it's you know, I know it's early, but you win that game. Second game of the year. There's a good chance you could go eight and zero the rest of the way. Um, that's including games at Washington, and um, then they play Oregon at the the back end. Their schedule is not that bad. Like it, it's set up really good for them. Um, I just think there's a couple games in there where you need to really win those. All right. Let's, take so let's look let's look at their schedule real quick. And they start out, it's at home, but Fresno State is not going to be a huge slouch here to start the season off. And then they get Texas at home. So those two home games to start out are pretty obvious. Opening, I, well, think. I and, think both of them then, are. Um, and then they then get, get Arkansas, Arkansas State. Then you get yeah. Arkansas State at home, and then USC at home. So, 
And then Minnesota at home. They played five straight home games to start the year off. Then at Washington, open date, at Illinois, Michigan State at home, Oregon at home, at Indiana, Northwestern at home, and then they finish at Ohio State. But I want to I want to add something here when we're looking at this schedule. They're away games, okay? Are at Illinois, at Washington, at Indiana, and at Ohio State. Everything else is at home. They get Washington, Ohio State, and, and Indiana, and Illinois. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> so my over and under. I have the, I haven't set it nine. What I haven't said it. That's that's pretty much where I have mine. I just I, I'm not really I, now. I know their schedule is favorable, but there's some home games in there where you're going to have to really play to win, and um, you really have to want to make plays to win those games. And and we're out where we have the I question mark. This, we're at the big house. Yeah. I called this and, at the big house when we started this. I didn't say Michigan. I said we're at the big house. And the reason why yeah. I said that is because they get Texas at home. They get USC at home. They get Oregon at home. I mean, they get Fresno State at home. They get, you know what I mean? Like, so they are, Michigan State is at home. They're right. Um, you know, so they play quite a few big games at the big house this year. I've got them at nine, and I do think at nine that they miss the playoffs. Yep. I think they're right there, but I think they miss the playoffs. All right, then we're going to Michigan State. I thought it was Minnesota. Uh, Michigan State. Oh, Michigan State. That's right. Michigan State. Michigan State. Um does have a new coach I had in my mind mixed up a few minutes ago, but Michigan State does have a new coach. What do you think about Michigan State here? They 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 bring mm-hmm. over Oregon State's coach, um, who had done a really, really good job at Oregon State. This group, to me, is the toughest to, to – um, digest because they had that one good year, um, and then yeah, they just kind of and they just kind of fell out. Uh, my thing is, you know, with their new coach this year, I think their coach is a good coach. I mean, he done a re- really good job at Oregon State. Um, Smith. Isn't that his last name? I'm trying to think of his last name. John, right yeah, John, Jonathan Smith. Yeah. Jonathan Smith, yeah. Um, yeah. The Oregon State coach, and and he done a really good job over there um, turning that program to a, a nine or ten win season the last couple of years. Um, I think he'll – I foresee him getting this Michigan State team going – now, I'm not so sure that he's going to get to nine or ten wins this year in the first year or nothing, but no. I, I I think that he'll get this team going. I really do. Well, he has to. You know, offensively, they brought in Tanner Miller from Oregon. He's the all-star center for um, – he was at Oregon State a year ago. Um, they got the offensive guard from Illinois, Andrew Dennis. I feel like will make a big impact. To me, the line wasn't bad last year, but the running the running game was just really horrible, and the and the passing could not make up for what was going on in on the line and the running game, and, and it was just really really bad. Um, now they did get an offensive coordinator, Brian Lindgren. Um, you know, Oregon State last year their offense wasn't wasn't really dominant, but they was good enough to win. And I think that's where this is going to come into play with Michigan State. I think they're going to be good, uh, which they – I mean, we got to talk about Aiden Childs. 
if we're yeah, on I offense mean, here, I mean, he comes over from Oregon State with his coach. Um, you know, he was the backup to DJ last year um, and played some, Aiden Childs. Uh, he's um, a young guy coming in, highly touted, um, and going to be coming in here to play quarterback for them and has been under Jonathan Smith's system. So he knows yeah. the system coming in. You know, well, I think I that's going to be a huge plus as well. Well, and I think adding Jack veiling the, the tight end from Oregon State will be a big will be a big thing. He was I think he'll be it a was. big all ten big big all big ten. Um they get back Montorio Foster. Um and Jerron Glover's back. So they'll be interesting to watch um on the offensive side of the ball. I think you I think you're going to see a lot of improvement with this Michigan State team where they've been the last two years on the Mel Cup. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Yeah. I, absolutely. I think you, you're going to see a lot of improvement. I love the hire here and and bringing guys over. So from from Morgan State on the defense of the ball, you know, um, the defense, just to be honest with you, has been atrocious um, the last couple of years. Actually, even the year that they won some games, it was bad. Um, it's just been atrocious under Mel Tucker. There's there's no other way around it but to yeah. say this. Um, Washington last year had 713 yards against yeah. Michigan State defense. In <laughs> East Lansing. Yeah, yeah, at Michigan State, yeah. So Yeah, in East Lansing, yeah. 713 yards. Yeah. Ohio State and Penn State combined for over 1,100 yards against yeah, this it pretty, team. It was pretty bad last year. So, defense. Let's this year, new coach Jonathan Smith. Jonathan Smith. They brought in seven new options in the transfer portal. Seven of the top nine options for the front seven are new guys. So, I mean, you know, we will see exactly how that turns out. I mean, you know, they got a bunch of new guys in here. The secondary is a bit more homegrown. You know, they've been around for a little while. A few of them have in the secondary on this team. Uh, yeah. But the front seven is basically going to be all new. So we will see if Jonathan Smith can get this defense doing anything and not getting rolled over steamrolled by good teams yeah. like they did last year. Um, my key that's, to, that's basically what they did. My key to the year is, is get, get first downs. Um, I'm not saying that it's going to be any better under Jonathan Smith, but last year, I think, you know, Oregon had a decent, good ground game. You know, they had that Martinez, the, um, he went to Miami yeah, um, and they, and they had a decent passing attack, but they, they had a hard, but still they had a hard time at, at moving the ball at times. Um, there was only like thirty eight percent, I think, at, on third down conversions. But I think overall, this will be a better um, situation at Michigan State um, with Jonathan Smith moving over here and moving his offense the way he runs it, and hopefully they'll do better at getting. Third down. Uh, absolutely a positive. I think you give him two, three years, I think he'll have him rolling. Yeah, I, really do. I, I, do, I do too. I think, um, he's a really, I think he was a great hire. I really do to pull him from Oregon State. Um, and so a key player here, um, Childs, um, is going to be a key player here for sure. But um, I've got Foster, a wide receiver, senior wide receiver here. I think that uh, I think that's why I think the reason I would pick that one is because you know you lose Keon Coleman to the NFL, yeah. the Bills, and then you lose Jaden Reed. You lose right. two of the top big time threats that you have on the slot and, and the wide guys, and, and you you need somebody to step up um, in the wide receiver room. Yeah, and, and I think I think he can do that. All right, key game. Um, 
I think it's the at Maryland game um, because their schedule sets up. They play Fort Atlantic first um, at Maryland, Prairie View a &M, at Boston College, Ohio State, at Oregon, Open Day, Iowa, at Michigan, Indiana, Open Day, at Illinois, Purdue, and Rutgers. Now, listen, this schedule is not, like, horrific, but there's spots in there at where they get home, certain home games that they're going to have to play hard to win. Um, you know, the Ohio State game, which I, I don't expect them to beat Ohio State at home, but crazier things have happened. They play Iowa at home, um, and then Indiana's going to be much improved. Um, so you got, you've got you got the uh, Maryland game at Maryland? As a I do, because, because you play Fort Atlantic first, then you play Prairie View, and then you play at Boston College, Ohio State, and Oregon. And I think yeah. you lose that Maryland game, you might not I get mean, a let's be honest. Ohio State at Oregon, open date, and then Iowa, and then at Michigan. That is four straight games. There's an open date. That's four straight games that's going to be pretty tough for them to. But, but to be honest, to be fair, I think two – or three of those games, with including Indiana, or home games. So um, you gotta you gotta at least steal one of those. You gotta at least steal one of those. That's why I say the Maryland game to me is crucial because if you don't win the Maryland game, that's you're, you're, four game stretch, man. That's tough. Now it is. I'm not sure you can get a win in that four game stretch. I mean, I'm it's just tough. being honest. With you. That's pretty. That's a pretty tough. Four game, four game stretch, if you ask me, yep. for them. I've got their over and under. I got their win set. I, I'm going to do it at six and a half. That's where that's where I got them. So that means if they go, you know, if they get to seven, that's a winning season bowl game here for first year head coach Jonathan Smith, and. You know, they could possibly be six and six, but I do think that this Michigan State team will be going bowling at the end of the year. Yeah, I, I do too. I think they'll um I think they'll be there. All right. Now we're going to Minnesota. Yep. We're gonna talk about the Golden Gophers and PJ Flack. Row the boat, baby. <laughs> Row the boat. That's right. All right. Now, here's my thing about P.J. Flat. A few years ago, it looked like he was really doing well. It's kind of slid back a little bit the last year or two. Mm -hmm. Are they are they ready to rebound and get back up for the, you know, the nine and four teams? You know, are, are they ready to get back there? Or what do you think? Where do you think they are? I think they they didn't have a quarterback last year. Tanner had been there for a long time. Listen, man, the Minnesota's year last year was was odd. You know, they, yeah. lost, they, they gave up a win against Northwestern. Um, they beat Iowa for the first time in quite a while. Yeah. Um, you know, they survived Nebraska. They lost to Wisconsin. And they had a regular losing – season and they still got to a bowl game because there's five and seven because I think of the academic progress thing. Yeah. So they, they, got got to, the bowl they ended up to go to a bowl game. So yeah. And then then you had all the rumors going around that that PJ Flake was going to UCLA and and that affects recruiting. Um and and after that he crushed the transfer portal. Um, they landed the All American passer, um, from the SCS level. Um, Max Brosmer. If nobody knows who that guy is, um, he was the star for New Hampshire. Um, probably one of the best quarterbacks on the market, I think. Well, let's be honest, Tanner, the quarterback he had for several years that won a lot of games with, he wasn't a highly touted guy either. Yeah, and, and 
the, the main thing to me, their, their top four wide receivers are gone. Um, the only truly one that's back is Elijah Spencer. And he only had nine t- – he had, only had nine um, catches last year. Um, right. It, it won't be – The turn back room is not bare, though. No, it's not. And they do run the ball pretty heavy up there. So, I mean, you know, they'll probably be doing a lot of that. But I Darius, think to me, Darius Taylor's the, the, the big key for that. Now, they get Marcus Major. They got him from Oklahoma. I think they got Jaron Mangum, Mangham from Michigan State. Um, they can't just now focus on the run. They have to focus on the pass and the run. So, yeah. All right, defense. On the defensive side of the goal, ball, I mean, kind of so-so. I mean, kind of middle of the pack. You know, so-so, basically. Um, do losing, they, I think, I think Tom, losing Tyler Newbin hurt a little bit. He went to the New York Giants. Um, yeah. For safety. I think, I think that'll hurt him, but Minnesota always has good – Defensive backs always has, um, you know, right. they get their leading tackler back, Jack Henderson, um, Justin Wally will be back. So uh, they always have tough, gritty guys in the backfield to to make offenses honest. The linebacking core, Kate, Cody Lindenberg, um, Devin Williams, Maverick, Baranowski. Maybe I said that right. <laughs> um, you know, so on the defensive side of the ball. All right, so key the season for the Gophers. Convert is it third downs. I think I mean, it's I that a couple of times. Well, I think it is because like you gotta, you gotta be downs. you gotta be consistent on offense and they, they just wasn't consistent enough last year. All right, so key players. Who do you have as a key player here? Is it is it that quarterback? Is I think it it's the hand? quarterback. I just think the quarterback play has to improve. Um, a year ago, it just did not. Um, I think he brings a kind of new – Max Brosmer or something like that's his name. Max Brosmer, yeah. yeah. He yeah. brings a new dynamic to the offense, and I think he'll, he'll step in and he'll do a really good job for them. All right, key game. That's tough because – I'm going to go through their schedule here. Um, I they think play it's North Iowa. Carolina. Yeah. At they play home. North Carolina at home, Rhode Island at home, Nevada at home, Iowa at home, at Michigan, UC, USC at home, at UCLA, play open date. Well, they don't play open date. They have an open date. Then they play Maryland at home, at Illinois, at Rutgers, open day at, well, no, home Penn State. That's right. And then they play at Wisconsin. Now, they do miss Ohio State and they miss Oregon um, and Washington. But there's a, there's a part in there where it gets a little nasty. Iowa, at Michigan, USC, USC, and at UCLA. And that's right out of the gate. Yeah. And then they end at, I mean, with Penn State and then at Wisconsin. At the end, so I, I think I'm gonna uh, go. I mean, there is some tough game. Your I key think game, key, I think the key game is North Carolina. I think, yeah. I think you gotta get started on I the mean, right foot, man. North Carolina at the beginning of the season, you know, yeah, the week zero they, game. Yeah, I think it's that's a week zero yeah. game. Um, I think it's kind of yeah. huge. Yeah, Minnesota and North Carolina on August the 29th is that yeah. game. Um, I picked the Iowa game on September 21st as the key game for them. Um, I have their win total set at six and a half. That's about right. Under. That's about right. I just think. I mean, I think they're in that six range. There's a few games in there where they just they're going, you know, like I've said it over and over. You're going to have to 
You have to, you have to compete to win some of those Robert. games, especially at home. So. Yeah, I mean, I agree. All right, so we got Minnesota going bowling. Now we're, we're going to talk about Nebraska. And we have got second year Matt Rule here. Where do you think um, Matt Rule takes this um, Husker team after stealing the quarterback here and keeping keeping him at home? Uh, so the main thing that I'm going to say, they're they're kind of rolling the dice with a true freshman here. Nebraska is. You know, what do you what do you think with um the true you know having a true freshman run the show basically it's gonna be some ups and downs I would think it's gonna it's gonna be um to me you know Nebraska isn't expected to be one of the top teams this year but there's a good chance that they could surprise some some folks um if, if Nebraska does end up, you know, like I said, surprising teams, a large part of it is going to be because of their defense. The defense side of the ball is the one thing you can count on with Nebraska. Um, now, they're going to have, you know, experience at offense this year that they've not had. Um, you know, the challenge to me is can this offense match the defense? Um, if the offense is able to match what the defense does, I think this team could be really, really good. Um, Let me just say this. I'm an older guy here, um, and I remember the 80s and 90s when Nebraska was really, really good. I, I, I remember Tom Osborne, and, you know, I, I remember those days. And I just want to say this. College football is more fun when Lincoln, Nebraska – plays good football. I mean, there was a time, you know, the last 10, 10 15 years, let's talk like it is the last 15 years, everybody's pretty much thought that college football runs through the SEC and Alabama, you know, I mean, but there was a time where it ran through Lincoln, Nebraska in the mid nineties. Uh, you know, so I, I'm just going to say, you know, offensively, they are they bring in the star five star studded, um, you know, prospect here, Dylan. And I'm not sure how he pronounces his last name. Ryola. You know? Ryola. Ryola. Okay. Yeah. All right. You know, he was uh, committed elsewhere. Big name school. <laughs> Georgia. And. Georgia, yeah, big name school, committed there, and you know they he was he's from Nebraska, and they kept hitting him and kept hitting him and kept hitting yeah, him. And, his dad, and, his dad, his dad Dominique played at Nebraska. Yeah, played at Nebraska, and and you know, and he was committed to Georgia, and and committed for a while, and then late in the process, um, he flips. Big, big, huge get for Matt Rule here. But when you're putting all your eggs in the basket on a true freshman, I think you're going to see some ups and downs. You are. Um, but I do I'll say think – I'll say this. You know, yeah. their, their offensive front should be better, and, and, and the true freshman is going to need them to be. I'm going to say this, and this is a hot take, and – People can then go with where they want to with this, but if the offense can be average, Nebraska has a chance to slide into a couple of those spots in the big in the college football playoff. I'm not exaggerating. Like, I'm, see, I'm not ready to go quite that far. But, but, but I, I say I, that I say that because of their schedule. Their schedule sets up for them. Yeah, and we'll, and we'll get to that. And we'll get but to I, that. You know, I mean, I'm not quite ready to say that on the defensive side of the ball. 
you seem to like their defense. So let's talk about their, their defense. I love their defense. Their defense is is one of their biggest um, dynamic duos. You know, they 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 they've done that since the early nineties. You know, they've always had a defense. Um, you know, they've they've always been hard nosed. Their defensive uh, line. Every all three of them are back. They play a three, and all three of them are back on the defensive line. Yeah, I mean they're including their anchor Nash yep. Hutmacher. Yep. Hutmacher, yep. What a name! Yeah, that's three hundred thirty pounds. Ty Robinson, um, Jamari yeah. Butler. Yeah, that's they, they, their, they, that's their front three. They got a fun defense to watch, um, and that's like I said, if their offense can penetrate and, and you know be just average with the schedule and the favorability that they got on their schedule, I think this team has a chance to do some really special things this year. The one knock I will say on their defense from last year is they didn't create enough turnovers. They did not. That would be that would be and, one of my one of my knocks I, on the defense. And I think that put put them a lot of times in in bad positions. Um, yeah, to lose so, games. You know, I mean, to improve on the defensive side of the ball this year, I think you got to create some turnovers on for that defense. Uh, key to the season. I mean, first I'm going to say two. First, they had 31. Turnovers last year. Yeah, it was pretty remarkable. They did. They didn't create them, but they had 31 turnovers last year. That's a and they lot, played a lot. Okay? And they played a, like, and they played nearly, a lot of close games. And they played a lot of close games. That's nearly that's nearly three a game, over two and a half a game. Um, you know, you, you got to cut that out. I mean, if you're going to have a a great season here, um, you've got to cut that out, and then you got to complete some passes. And I know. Bringing in the star guy here, so hopefully they can complete more than fifty percent of their passes because that's about where they were last year, fifty-one, something like that. Um, so hopefully they can complete a little bit more of their passes. That's my two keys. I think it's on the offensive side of the ball. Um, what do you got? I think that I think you put the nail on the head on it. That's that's the All right, key, key player. Right. I'm going to give you one that I don't think anybody is going to say, but I think he's going to be pretty key for them, and that is Gabe Irvin. He is a junior running back on this team. And last year, one of their reserve quarterbacks led the team in rushing. Um, 400 yards. That can't be the case here with this team. They've got to find a running back here. I think Gabe Irvin is the leader to be that guy. Mm -mm. Um, my key game is Illinois. And I say that, and everybody's probably going to think, well, why aren't you saying Coach Prime in Colorado when they come to town? The people's going to be think, watching that. But I think it is, but okay. Well, I, I think they have to win that if they're going to be any good. I, I, I do. But Illinois is the Big Ten opener. Um, and you can't lose that game if you're going to be much improved. Yeah, if but you win that game. The way Nebraska lost that game, the Colorado game last year. It has to be in the back of their minds. You have to get this win. You can't let – you can't. You, you can't let Prime get you again. I mean, you just can't. No, you can't. You win this game, and with the schedule, like I said, I was telling you earlier, the schedule is so favorable. 7-0 is not a – 7-0 is not a, out of the realm because you're 7-0 going to Ohio State, and you're probably playing for a big game situation that you haven't had probably in five or six years. Well, let's look at it. They start – with UTEP at home, Colorado at home, Northern Iowa at home, Illinois at home, then at Purdue, Rutgers at home, 
open date at Indiana and then at Ohio State, UCLA at home, open date at USC, Wisconsin at home, and at Iowa is how they close out the year. They do miss Michigan, Oregon, Penn State, Washington. So there's a few teams that they do miss. I agree with you when, you know, if you can get a few of these early games and get some some momentum here, I mean, could they be 7-0 and going into the Ohio State game? It's quite possible. I'm just throwing it out there. I mean, but you gotta you gotta win a few of these key games up, you know, early here um, to be able to do that. So, um, all right, my over and under. I've actually I got, got them set at seven. I got it I got set them. at seven. I got them at eight. I, I just think that they're they're going to be much improved and. And their schedule, yeah. their schedule benefits them, and it's favorable. And I think they'll get to eight. Eight wins would be a really good season, and and a rise from where they were last year. Um, and I think that would be a, a. I think Nebraska fans would be happy with an eight win season this year. I think they would too. Right. Northwestern, we're moving to Northwestern. Um, Northwestern is. Had some difficult times the last couple of years. Um, played with an interim coach that they turned into the regular head coach now um, last year after Pat Fitzgerald was fired right before the season last year. Um, where do you see – are they are they still in a, I guess, complete rebuild here or because he was there last year? Do they have something to build on here for this for this year? Well, you know, with Northwestern, they're coming off they're coming off a scandal. Um, things were just imploding. I'm um, going, you know, everybody thought, well, you know, the 2023, the 2023 season would be just they they forget about it and it'd be a lost year. I, I don't. It did. It wasn't. Let's just. You know, they, they did lose some games earlier against Rutgers and Duke, but then they just went total full Northwestern. <laughs> yeah. Let's just say they, they, they won some games. They, defense, ran, the they ran the defense, ball. And they, they did. Much gave up passing. I mean, honestly. They did. They, they ran the ball. Um, you know. And, you know. They did things that I didn't think they could do because they was going into the year with a lot of with a lot of ifs and ands and buts. And um, the running backs are good enough, I think, to 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 do really good. Um, um, Joseph Heeman is another. They got a new those offensive guys. coordinator. Um, they do. Zach Lujan, Lujan, I think that's how you say his name. Yeah. Um, which they did lose Anthony Tice. Um, he, he went to Ohio. He was their lead, second leading rusher. Um, so I feel like the quarterback situation has got to be better. Um, well, they brought in a guy. Do you know who they brought in? Yes, I know. Ryan Holinsky. No, that's not the guy I was thinking. Oh, was you they, talking about? They brought, um, in, they brought in Mike White. You remember Mike White that played at Vanderbilt? Right. Mike Wright, yeah. Yeah. Right, yes. Yeah. That played at Vanderbilt. Um, yeah. He was at Mississippi State last year, but he has transferred into Northwestern here. I think it'll be he's interesting going, to see if he's he actually his job. He's actually going to have an opportunity here, I think. And yeah, two of, two of their top three receivers return. Um, Bryce Kurtz is back. Um, I feel like, you know, the tight ends are really good. Um, you know, that's where I go to the defense. The defense carried the team, and and, and they took the ball yeah. away. Um, 
the bending don't breaking type stuff. Um, their linebacker play right. was good. Um, Xander Mueller, it, to me, is the star of the defense. He had 110 stops last year and three interceptions. I think he's a really big key to the year. Um, you know, Adrian Hubbard returns. Um, yeah. He's the team's best pass rusher, I think. They get Car- Carmine Bastone, I think, and Nazi Story. Um, they return. Um, second, the biggest thing to me, the secondary took a big, took a big shot. Um, Rod yeah, Hurd, yeah. I think they let he left for Notre Dame. Um, right. Garnett Hollis left. Jaheim Joseph. They went to West Virginia. Um. So, the defense needs to do what they did a year ago, and that's and that's create more turnovers. Um, and they did a really good job of that a year ago. Well, that's actually one of my keys is the turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. They created a bunch of turnovers, um, you know, last year. I think – and it, and, it, and it – like those turnovers allowed them to have a wins um, yeah. last year, late, later in the year as well. Now, they were coming off of a 1-11 and 11 season in 2022. Um, that's why I say there's actually maybe – a little bit of something, a promise here of something to build on for this Northwestern team, I, th- I feel like. So, it who's is. your key player? Mike Wright, I think, you know. Mike Wright. I, he, I don't know why I said white. Wright. I, yeah. And he, for me, I just feel like he was brought in to be the guy. And, yeah. and that's, that's big for him because he's – there, there was times where he he looked really good, and then he he got set on the bench, and and now he's getting an opportunity well, to do something. He's been in QB battles just about everywhere he's been, everywhere um, he's went. Yeah, and, and he's and he's played some and played good, and then a guy would come in and play some and play good, and you know, so I mean, you know, yeah. they've he's never really had the keys per se. If right. you know what I mean to, to the Pontiac. You know he's right. he's always he's always been the passenger. And he's, yeah, well, I mean he he's had a spare key and can hop in when somebody's not using it or something. Yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying. But he's never had the set of keys. Uh-huh. You know, um, and I feel like here at Northwestern that might be what he can get here. So I agree with you on that. Um, for him. I think it's a good spot for him. My key game. I, I have to say Duke. Um, Northwestern to me is is not great at getting off the good starts. Um, they've always kind of had early early bugs. Um, right. Now now the, now the first game they play Miami, which that'll be tough. Um, because they're gonna winnable. be much, it's winnable. They'll, they'll be much improved in the MAC. Um, and then they play East Illinois, so there's a good chance for them to be three and zero. For the first time since 2020, if they if they beat Duke, um, yeah. in which we don't know what Duke's going to be because they lost Mike Elko to Texas A&M, and there's a whole slew of different dynamics right. with Duke. So, so looking um, at their schedule, they do play Miami University and Duke at home, Eastern Illinois at home, at Washington, open date, Indiana at home, at Maryland, Wisconsin at home, at Iowa. At Purdue, open date, Ohio State, at Michigan, and Illinois at home is how they finish the season. Um, they miss Penn here's, State and Oregon. Here's the thing, USC, UCLA. Here's the problem that they got. They go to Washington, Maryland, Iowa, and Michigan. And they're going to be tough. And you're, yep. you're probably not going to beat Ohio State. And Wisconsin and Illinois is going to be a little bit better. So I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something here. You know, I'm going to set this at five and a half. So can Northwestern go bowling? Do they have it in them? Can can they actually get to six wins? Like I said, two years ago, they were one and eleven. They lost their coach a week or two 
before the season last year. We're gonna have to steal. We're gonna have to steal a couple of games. A few of those are at home. They're gonna have to probably beat Maryland on the road. They're probably gonna have to win Illinois, and they might even have to beat Wisconsin at home. And that's that's even it at home. And that's still a tough game. So, I mean, I'm gonna say that they don't. I'm gonna say that they 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 fall short and don't go bowling here is what I'm going to say. But I think it is within the realm of possibilities to at least ask and talk about. So I thought I would put it at that and uh, at least have a conversation about it. All right. Ohio State. The Ohio, the Ohio State. State. Yeah. Better put that in there. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got to bring up a stat as we are talking about Ohio State here. Okay. So I got to bring this up. Ryan Day, there has been a lot of talk in the offseason. If he don't win Michigan, is he going to get fired and all this? Okay. I got to bring Ryan Day, his overall record is 59 and 8. Okay? 59 and 8. Did y'all hear me? His record is 59 and 8. Okay? Now listen. The eight losses, just take a listen. He lost to Missouri last year in the Cotton Bowl, 11-win team. He's lost three to Michigan, okay? He lost to an, an Oregon State team that won the Pac-12 champion or not Oregon State, an Oregon team that won the Pac-12 championship. He lost to the 2020 Alabama team. And he lost to the 2019 Clemson team. So here's what I'm going to say to y'all. All eight of those losses were to 10-plus win teams. All eight. That's an astonishing stat to me. He's 59-8. And all eight of his losses have been to 10 plus win teams. And yet he's still every single one of them. And yet he's still recruiting at the highest level. But my thing is people act like he should be fired. What? <laughs> I mean, hello. I mean, wow. That is an absolute astonishing stat, if you ask me. So, beat Michigan or else, right? That's pretty much it, I think. <laughs> Isn't that where we're at? I'll say this about Ohio State, and, and you know, they was really good last year offensively. You know, their defense was elite, but they got to improve their offensive line play. Um, offensive line hasn't been really great. Ohio State, great. Um, they need to have the line go from really good to elite to, I think, to win a national championship. Well, let me tell you one more quick little think tidbit about Ohio State. In the college football playoff era since 2014, just how good Ohio State has been. If – you could go back and every single year was a 12 team playoff. There's only one school that would have made it all 10 years in the college football playoff of a 12 team playoff. Not Alabama, not Clemson, it's Ohio State. It's the only team that would have made it all 10 years. 
it's Ohio State. That's how good they've been. And Ryan Day's been about half of that. Urban Meyer was about the other half. All right, let's get to offense, defense. Let's be honest, guys, they're loaded. This talent-wise, this team is loaded. They're on they're on par with Georgia as far as talent. It might be even that. this team is absolutely loaded. Now, they just named Walker it is Walker, right? Walker Howard. That's yeah. his first name, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. From the transfer from K State, they just named him the starting quarterback um, within the last week. Will Howard. Will Howard. Thank you. Yeah, Will Howard. I, I knew it was wrong. I knew it sounded wrong when I said it. That's why I paused. Will Howard. Thank you. Um, they uh, they just named him the starting quarterback from K-State. I know. I'm sorry. I said his name wrong. I apologize. But anyways. All right. So, where do you think? Outside of that, I mean, Lord have mercy. Offensive back, line. No, offensive line needs to be improved. Um, but I, I kind of want to – I mean, we can talk about offense all day long. But their defense is special. Yep. Yeah, but wait a second. Before we go to defense, we also got to enter in Chip Kelly in the offense here as well. I mean, yeah, it, it's he about, left to me, a head coaching job at UCLA to come to, take to be the offensive coordinator at Ohio State. To take that year, yeah. Um, yeah. Listen, I, I'm just going to be frank with you. Like, Ohio State secondary – is downright unfair. You know, they got Caleb Downs. They got Denzel Burke, um, Davis, Igbosson. I can't say his last name. Igbosson. Um and then, and then you – that's not even – you're adding Han, Hancock returns. Um, he's back there. Um, Ransom, the transfer. Um, I think he's a transfer from Alabama. Um, if I'm not mistaken, he was. Well, yeah, they absolutely. No, 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 no. Lathan Ransom made the transfer. It's Kalen Downs. It was a transfer from Alabama. Alabama. From Alabama. Yeah. yeah. Um, that secondary to me is the most talented secondary in the country, in my opinion. Michigan's got a good one too, but they I do. A lot of state. I mean, Caleb Downs is fantastic. I mean, just that, that's my that's my player to watch. Um, my. My, you know, he was fantastic at Alabama. He done a lot of great things at Bama, and now he gets to to do it on the big stage again with Ohio State. Um, they're gonna be really, they're gonna be really, really good. This Ohio State team is absolutely loaded. The defense is gonna be nasty. Um, I wanted to give you, you know. As far as a key to the season, I mean, let's be honest. One of the only weaknesses at all, and I'm not saying it's a weakness, is offensive line. The offensive yeah. line has to do a little bit better here. Well, uh, they got to be better. They got to be better, I think, if they want to um, be a leader. But eight. I will say this I'm not sold on Will Howard from Kansas State. Yeah, but look at who he's got. His we like, look at his weapons. Well, who I, has a bad? Let, let me just say this: Who ha who has a backfield? Judges. Judges and Henderson. Yeah. Oh, I and know. Then you got, and then you got five star Jeremiah Smith, and then then you got Abuka. He he returns. Yeah, and that's not to mention. They're, they're tied in play. Like, this offense, to me, it is just unfair, ungodly amount of, of talent. And you put that behind quarterback, he's going to do Let's some things. Be 
they're really, really damn good. That's all I'm going to say. All right, key yeah. player. Is it Howard? Um, it's Howard, I think. Um, but I think the play around him is going to be good enough to 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 overlook a lot of the um, weaknesses and, and errors, I think. But I'm going to keep – a guy to keep your eye on all season long is Caleb Downs. I'm just going to say it. All right, key game for them. Is there any other game that they need to play outside of Michigan? Probably not. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it has to be that, right? Yeah. I know that's the last game of the year and all, but still. All right, let's talk. Take a look at their schedule. They start out with Akron and Western Michigan at home, open date, Marshall at home, at Michigan State, Iowa at home. They do play at Oregon. That is a very important game of the season for them and for the Big Ten as well. The open date, Nebraska at home, at Penn State, Purdue at home, at Northwestern, Indiana at home, and Michigan at home. Yeah. So – that is a look at their schedule. Um, the at Oregon game is just as important, I think, as the Michigan game. But I know that Ohio State fans will tell you that it's the Michigan game. All right. They're over and under. Ten and a half wins is what I got it set at, John. Mm -hmm. Do they go over or under ten and a half wins? That means they got to win – Either Michigan or Michigan and Ohio, Oregon, Oregon to get to eleven. I think they go over it. I think that they, um, I think they are probably going to win the title. I think this year. I just think they got to beat Michigan first. I just got them at eleven and one as well. So yeah. I think they're that good, and they are going. Is that schedule is. Playoff. To me, that schedule's cake. I mean, unless you look at the Oregon game and the Michigan game. Oregon game's going to be a tough one at Oregon, but um, yeah. if they can get past that one, I think they, they're smooth sailing to Michigan. Oh, I think so as well. Speaking of Oregon, Oregon is the next team that we're going to talk about. Oregon is loaded as well. I think those are the two top teams in the Big Ten. I really do. Um, and Dan Lanning is killing it in getting talent to Oregon, just to be honest. Always has been. I mean, he's absolutely killing it, honestly, um, and doing a heck of a job. Now, here's what I want to say about Oregon. And I said this to some friends the other day. Oregon has won a shit ton of games without ever really winning the big one. They've only been to the college football playoff one time the very first year, 2014. That's it. They've won Pac-12 titles. They've won, but without, they've never completely climbed the mountain. They, they hadn't even been to the college football playoff since 2014, and only once. So... They've they done played, a lot of good. And they play and they did play they play for the title. Win. They played for the title in 2010 against Auburn, but they ended up losing that one. So right. But and that they was played during, for the title in 14. But that was during the BCS era. BCS probably. era, yes. So I think he can. I, I mean, this might be the most loaded wide receiver room. That I've seen Oregon have. Um, you know, they get Dylan Gabriel um, from Oklahoma, which Dylan Gabriel is going to be. I mean, he's the guy. Here's like, my guy. I'm going to say this right, right as as we're talking. Since you brought him up, Heisman potential here with Dylan Gabriel and, under Dan Lanning, and he's a lefty. 
Yes. I'm telling you, everybody else has been talking about some other people for Heisman. Dylan Gabriel is the guy to watch. You heard it here from Mr. Brad. All right. I'm telling you. And that's not to and 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 to me, that's where we go to defense now with them. Like their offense is going to be great, but that ain't even to mention their 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 back end on their secondary. Malik Muhammad might be one of the best cover guys in the country. Um Tui, not Tui, um DJ Ungualale. I think that's how you say Ungualale. Um, his brother's on the front front four. He has a yep. brother. And DJ we're going to be really good. He's a sophomore, yeah. Oh, I really, really like this Oregon team. Matter of fact, I have went back and forth which one of these last two teams I think is going to win this. And I lean one day this way and I lean one day that way. I really like both, both of these teams. Um, I mean, the secondary here is going to be good. The linebackers are going to be good. My thing is on defense, moving into the um, Big Ten, they're used to a passing league where, you know, they have to, you know, and and I think it's going to be a little bit different here um, with some smash mouth football. Um, so I think that's going to be a key for them. Let me get my plug in my charger since it's been so long. Hold on All right. To adjust here. I think that's going to be a key to adjust. Um, DJ's brother I have as a key player. Um, he's a sophomore linebacker. Um, Mateo. Um Ugale, I don't know how he pronounces all that. So you, that's all I can tell you. Uh, but that's that's who I have as a key player. Key game, I mean, I think it's the Ohio State game. The Ohio State game. Did you notice I said the? Yeah. I think, I think it is. The because Ohio. Their schedule sets up pretty good for them. Now, they do have the annual Oregon State game. They they got to keep that game. Um and they and they have a date at Michigan later on. Which is tough. Um and isn't it weird to see Oregon Oregon State play early in the year than they do at the yeah. end of the year? Like, it's a little odd. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's totally but I, different. But, but I think the me uh the Ohio State game is crucial because if you win that game you're sitting pretty good to get to you, the college. You've got the upper hand in the Big Ten if you if you win that game. Which to Early. me, that whole weekend, if you haven't looked at the at the slate, you need to look at the slate that weekend. That you might not want to leave your couch. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. They're From they're scheduled. They weekend, play yeah. Idaho. They play Boise State second game. Boise State's not gonna be no slouch here. They've got a lot of talent on offense as well. At Oregon State, the third game, open date at UCLA, Michigan State at home, Ohio State at home, Purdue, Illinois at home, at Michigan, Maryland at home, at Wisconsin, open date, and then they end with uh, Washington at home. That's their schedule. Don't miss a whole lot. They miss Penn State and USC of the big house, of the big teams in the Big Ten. They don't miss a lot. So I think this Oregon team, when you look at the the schedules, compare the schedules between Ohio State and Oregon. I think Ohio State's got a little bit of advantage if they can win the Ohio State game. So the winner of that game. That's why I said. The key game is the Ohio State game for them. So, 10 wins. That's what I got their season set at is 10 wins. I got to go over or under. I think, that, I think they got a shot to go to the championship game this year. But I think they do as well. I think this team will win 10 or 11 games, and this team will be in the college football playoff. And that's depending on, you know, teams like Georgia, Alabama, the 
the top dogs yeah. in front of them. So I think this team will be in the college football playoffs. All right. Now let's get to Penn State. And let's talk about Penn State for a few minutes. So James Franklin. Here is another guy. We talked about Iowa early. I talked about Oregon, who had who has rarely ever got to or won the big game, the big, big game. Here's another guy. James Franklin got a tremendous record, but he's like three and twenty-one against top ten teams, or three and twenty-two as a coach. Can never beat Michigan, can never beat Ohio State. Well, they had the – they was there. And, Can they get there? Well, you got to think, 2020 they was there, 2001, um, you know, they they had a, they had that 21-5 run where they, where they ended up losing to Ole Miss, which I didn't think really mattered much. But um, the end of the day, it's just simple. Um, they have a Michigan and Ohio State problem, and it's a downfield passing problem. Um, they just can't get the ball to the to their guys. Like it, quarterback play has been very average, and I'm not saying Ohio State but is bad. Those two teams. It's only against those two teams. That's it. It is. That's it. Yeah. And, and I'm saying, and what I was saying, I wasn't saying Ohio State was having a downfield field problem. I was saying Penn State does against these teams, against Michigan, yeah. Ohio State. They just simply cannot move the ball. They, which, right. and, and even Indiana moves the ball on these teams. And what does that come back to? Does that even Indiana? I mean, does that come back to coaching, or, or is it just? <laughs> It's funny the way you said it. I'm sorry. Well, I'm saying. I'm, Indiana. Just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh me, they got me. They got me laughing. I'm sorry. But here's the yeah. deal. Three years ago, we had some of these same questions about Jim Harbaugh in Michigan. He could never get up. He could never win the big one against Ohio State, and he always got knocked out of the college football playoffs, and we had these same question marks about Michigan and Jim Harbaugh three years ago. Now, can Penn State do that? Are they there? Can they can they climb that mountain? But here's my, here's my next question. If they can make the 12-team tw college football, will it matter? Will Penn State be 100% on board and the fans be on board if Franklin can get them to the college football playoff? <laughs> Whether they lose to Michigan and Penn State or not. If they're 10-2 and two and can get in. Well, they I, think it help. I think it helps. Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying it's going to, like, dissolve things that has happened – in the last two to three years, four years, that they've had opportunities to to really go and, and do the do the things that they want to do. But my God, man, you got to fix your offense. I'm sorry, like it's. I know there's a lot of knock on him, but the man, just like I said with Iowa, the man wins ten games a year. I mean, pretty much. If your offense cannot, you know, contribute. And you can't get better quarterback play out of Eller. Like, well, let's be honest. He was better than a lot of people think he was. He was. He, was. he just struggled in those two games. In those two games, yeah. And it don't get no easier starting out the gate going to – I mean, to more he than, had 2,600 yards. He had 25 touchdowns, only two picks. I mean, that's not a bad year, guys. No, it's not. It's really not. It's just those those two teams. He he just he just ain't can't get over the hump. 
Now, offense, there's only one starter back on the offensive line. Does that scare you a little bit for this Penn State team? Mm, yeah, a little bit. You know, they lost Keandre, Keandre Lambert Smith to Auburn. That was a that was a pretty big loss. Um, Tyler Warren is a really good tight end. Um, I think he's going to be a big. And they have a good running back rotation as well. They do. They might have one of the best running back tandems in the country. Tandems, yeah. Singleton and Allen together. Yeah, they're they, pretty good. Yeah. Now Julian Fleming will be a a, a big plus out on the outside. Um, He'll be yeah. really good catching the ball and whatnot. Um, now All their right. defense. Now their defense. Abdul Carter is he ready to blow up? Yep. I mean, he could be. He absolutely. No, they got be. a good secondary. Their secondary is really good. They got Kevin Winston. Um, he was really good. Led the team last year with tackles. Jalen Reed. Um, their corner, I feel like their corner situation isn't a question mark. Um, they got AJ Harris from Georgia and they got Cam Miller. Um, Penn State's all about defense. Um, they're going to keep you in games, they're going to make sure that yep. you're hanging around at the end of the game. Um, and even James in those Franklin missed, does a great job playing deep, tough defense, he, he always has, even at Vandy. And, he did. And even with, you know, the Michigan-Ohio State games, the defense hung in the game for quite a while. It was just yeah. the offense could not score and they couldn't get enough – get enough. Well, I mean, that's got to be a key to the season. When you're playing – when you're playing uh, Ohio State and Michigan, just complete some passes, man. I mean, honestly. Yeah, it's simple. I mean, it should be pretty simple. It's catch and throw, you know. I mean, just complete some passes because – their offense is just non-existent when they play those games yeah. for some reason. Um, key player, you think it's Fleming? Mm -hmm. On the outside, Julian Fleming, wide receiver? Yep. I mean, I think it, it you know, it really, really could be. Um, I think he, he'll be a key player for him. Who you got as a well, what game do you have as a key game? I got USC. Um, you know, they have that schedule with um, West Virginia starting out. Then they play Bowling Green. Then they have Open Day, Kent State at home, Illinois home, UCLA home at USC Open Day um, at Wisconsin, Ohio State home. Washington home at Purdue at Minnesota and Maryland at home. And where did Brad go? I lost him. Hey. I'm, oh, here. There. I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. I was just kind of messing with you. <laughs> making sure you were awake. Oh, oh goodness. Good. <laughs> oh, goodness. Right. So you think the key game is the USC game? Yeah. At I USC? Do. Um, I think it's one of the, I think it's the key game of the year. I think, you know, with, especially with the Morgantown game, I think that's a key game early with West Virginia, but I don't think that's really the biggest game. Um, they played USC three times since 2000. USC's won all three. I think they need to get over the hump. Okay. Years. Here's what I'm going to do. So, if they get USC and, you know, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to set their win total at 10. Can Penn State get to 10 and make the college football playoff? I think 10's there. I mean, they don't, play, they don't play Michigan. Did y'all hear me? They don't play Michigan. That's huge for them. Now, they do play at USC, but they don't play Michigan. That's a plus. So I think 
I think 10 wins and getting to the college football playoff is a possibility here. Um, that's what I got them, at, to be honest. Now, let's get to Purdue. Purdue. Um, to be honest with you, I mean, they're, they're, they could have a little bit of a down year, rough year here. I think Purdue could. Um, second year coach here for them. Um, you know, what, what do you think, John, when it comes to Purdue? You know, Brom left a couple of years, you know, now second year. They're in the second year with a coach here. Well, I mean, um, they got a good offensive coordinator in Graham Harold. I think, you know, with him, yeah. I think they can be really, really good and special. Um, you know, offensive line has to be as good as it was last year. It was great. They the went four eight ball. last year, though. Let's be honest. Yeah, they they went real good. Um, the passing game was was not. It was okay, but it wasn't the greatest. Um, you know, they they lost Deion Burks. He went to Oklahoma. T.J. Sheffield is is gone. Um, Yassine left for South Florida, their other receiver. So, I'll say this. Purdue's in a total rebuild. And it's just going to take some time to get it to, to be back to where Brom had it. Brom, you know, left it in a good spot. But, you know, with the way the transfer portal moves around now, guys go everywhere and, and move around different places. And and that's been the case for Purdue. And they, they've, just, they've just been hit pretty hard. But here's the deal. On defensive side of the ball, they were the worst – Passing defense in the in last year. Yeah, they they the they allowed they allowed thirty points per game, which was really really bad, and, inconsistent. And US and USC and Oregon and Washington are coming to the Big Ten, and they're yeah. already the worst. That's not a good yeah. sign. I'm sorry. Yeah. To say it. Well, that's where I go with our keys to the season, like. The pass defense has to be night and day better. Like you cannot give up that much yardage and expect to win many football games, um, especially with the new look Big Ten and with or especially with Oregon coming in and USC and Washington. all these teams that all yeah. these teams that move the football out there and, is, is elite. Um, yeah. yeah, and you know, as long as the offense to me is doing everything that they need to do, I think the defense will be good. But the defense doesn't have to be great. It just has to be average. And I think that needs to improve this year. Key player? I think it's Nylon Green, the transfer from Georgia. I mean, he's he's really good. He's got all the skills, you know, yeah. to, to be a factor um, in starting in this backfield. Um, he was really sought after in the portal. There's a lot of teams after him, Kentucky. Um, a lot of SEC schools, Big Ten. Um, now, I will say losing Spiriton, um to Texas a and is going to hurt him a little bit. He was a big part of their front. front. Um, I think he's a big – he was one of the hottest players out of the transfer portal, and I think losing him. Now, I thought, you know, if they added him back, I thought maybe they could add to the defense a little bit and be a little bit better this year, which they're still going to be better, but – they're not going to be as um, good without him, I don't think, up front. Yeah. All right. My key game, they lost to Nebraska last year. This time it's at home. It's September 28th. I think that's a key game for them at home is that Nebraska game. I think it is. But they play Indiana State, Notre Dame at home. Both of those are home. At Oregon State, Nebraska home at Wisconsin, at Illinois, Oregon at home, open date, Northwestern at home, at Ohio State, Penn State home, at Michigan State, and at Indiana. I got their their win at at five. I just I just that schedule, man, 
even though Notre Dame's at home, that's still yeah, Notre Dame. That's what I got is five. I got the wins set at five. Notre Dame's um, will be much improved. Oh, yeah. I think Notre Dame possibly could sneak into the college football playoff. I yeah, really they're, do. But they're in that during that um discussion. They're in the discussion for sure. Um so you know, I think five wins and and to be quite honest with, with you, they went four and eight last year. I think that would be a positive direction for them if they can get to five wins. All right, Rutgers. This is a team that is not nearly as bad as many people would like to think. You know, they were like five and one, six and one, or something at one point last year. Um, they kind of remind me of Mark Stoops. Yeah. Well, you know what you're you know what you're gonna get. You're gonna get a good running game. And, Listen, and sometimes I'm a Kentucky fan, but I'm gonna be honest with you. Rutgers kind of reminds me of Kentucky. I mean, they really do. They start out five and one, six and one, six and two, then they wind up wind up, you know, seven and six or whatever. Well, <laughs> you know, yeah. if you look at their offense, you know, this is going to be their best receiving core they've had in quite a while. You know, they get Christian Dramel back. Um, Dimir Miller, um, he was a transfer, I think, from Monmouth. Um, Nassim Brantley will be will be dangerous. Um, but the ground game is going to carry the load. Um, Kyle Monagai, I think that's how you say his name, he'll be back. Um, Samuel Brown, he's a key backup. Um, the offensive front was probably the best in the Big Ten in, in, in allowing sacks. They was pretty good. Um, and I think this team has a really good chance at, at, at surprising some people. And, you know. I do. I do as well. I, absolutely. I mean, on the offensive side of the ball for, for Rutgers, I mean, like you said, you talked about it some here. I mean, they have some pieces on the offense, offensive side of the ball, and they have pieces on the defensive side of the ball, to be quite honest. Um, you know, with offense – you kind of know what you're going to get from Rutgers. You are. You're going to get a good run game, and yeah. they, they just need to do a little bit more through the air, you know. Yeah. I mean. Now, now their defense, to me, they always keep their team in games. Um, they were 16th in the nation overall and allowing just 21 points a game a year ago, and I think yep. that will they be played, even better. Um, they played really good and, defense. Now, they did lose Deion Jennings. Um, he was their real good linebacker. Um, Muhammad Torre is back. Um, Tyreen Powell returns. Um, their defense is going to be probably their best unit, I think. But I think their offense has a really good chance to to, to be even better, too. You know what I like about their defense? And if, if you never watched them play, you probably wouldn't know this. But their secondary is hard hitting. If you watch them play, they come after you in the secondary. I, I like yeah, watching they, their secondary. Yeah, they come after you. They 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 hit you hard. They, they let you know they're there, and I like that. It's hard mouth football. Um, tough football when you go play Rutgers. All right, so key to the season for them. It's got to be. It's got to be. It's got to be passing the ball some, right? Well, they failed to hit fifty percent of their passes um, yeah. nine times last year. Like you, you got to yeah. improve throwing the ball. You got to, you got to make better decisions throwing the ball. Uh, I just think overall, they just need to throw the ball better um, and, and be better. And I think that's so, where the quarterback comes into play. That means a key, that means a key player. That means a, yeah, a key player's got to be the quarterback. And I, he's well, they've had, they, they went through. Right. I don't even. <laughs> I can't. I, Ethan Kalakamanis, I think that's how you say it. I, I don't know how to say that. But, um, I went through it. He's, the one, through he's a, the one that beat out Gavin Wimson, who transferred to Kentucky. Well, and, and the thing is, Rutgers went through, they've went through almost eight quarterbacks. I mean, at yeah. some point, you're going to have to, you know, figure this part of the equation out because it's, right. it's got to improve. 
Um, oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, eight, eight quarterbacks is insane. There's I, you shouldn't even you shouldn't even have eight quarterbacks. Okay. No, it's. I mean, honestly, my, let's talk about it for team. a minute. You shouldn't even have eight quarterbacks. Okay. No. <laughs> That's ridiculous. My key my key game is at Virginia Tech. Um, and I say that because somebody had mentioned earlier that one of the games was UCLA, but I think it's Virginia Tech because you're the schedule sets up really well for them. They play Howard at home, Akron at home, open day at Virginia Tech, home against Washington, at Nebraska, home against Wisconsin, home UCLA, at USC, open day at Minnesota at home, at Maryland, Illinois is at home, and at Michigan State. There's a really good chance that Rutgers could get eight or nine wins out of the schedule. I got it set at seven. I got their win total set at seven. Because the last, the end part of the schedule is very favorable. Even though you they, have that. If they can get that Maryland. Virginia Tech game, they might get eight or nine wins out of this. Yep. And Virginia Tech is going to be much improved too. So, yes. Uh, it's, and it's not going to be. Tech. And it's not going to be a cakewalk. So. Inner Sandman. <laughs> yeah. That's all I you got to say. Yeah. Yep. Um, um, I got them at eight. I think I put them at eight. At eight? Okay. All right. So the next one we're going to talk about is a new one here. It's UCLA. Here is my hot take on UCLA. I knew this was coming. I think <laughs> – I'm just going to be honest with you. I think they're out of their comfort zone here at UCLA. You could tell that by their press conference um, and everything that's going on with them. Um, they're in L.A. I don't know. Anyways, I'm not even going to say all that. But <laughs> here's my did hot you know? Thing. Did you know we're in L.A.? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Did you know they're in Los Angeles, by the way? Anyways. Yes. All right. So, my hot take is this. I think within three years, UCLA is going to want to be back out in the West Coast. Yeah. I don't think they are going to enjoy or like the travel. I don't. They have been used to being a kingpin in the Pac-12, um, you know, being one of the top dogs in the Pac-12, and they are going to be a middle to the bottom row um, um, team in the Big Ten, I think, for a few years. And I predict that UCLA will want out. The only thing that might keep them in is the money. But I think within three years, they're going to want to go back to the West Coast. That's my hot take. And, what do you think? And, you know, What's crazy to me is they haven't had a 10-win season since 2014. That's quite a while. Yeah. We're almost reaching maybe a decade. Like, even – it might be a decade. It is. And, and this is 2024. So. I mean, you know, they did get Eric Benneby. Um, He's their offensive coordinator. Um, they got Eric's sleeping with the enemy. Yeah, from the Chiefs. <laughs> Um, if people don't know who he is, he 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 actually played out west. He played um, for Colorado at running back. Hey, if you guys don't know Chris Berman, I'm gonna have to cross you off my list. Okay, so Eric Bieniemy, that was his nickname. Berman always had these famous nicknames. Eric sleeping with the Bieniemy. <laughs> It was one of my favorite nicknames, and yeah. he is now at UCLA, and I had to get that in here. <laughs> I had to. I just had to. Y'all have no idea. Well, and, and the thing, too, and the thing too with Eric Benamy and, um, you know, uh, Deshaun Foster, they're, they're going to want to run the football and, and, make, and make it UCLA football again, you know. UCLA to me is, is running the football, yep. managing the clock, and just just flat out running over top of you. 
and, ground and pound. Yeah. And we haven't had that from UCLA as of recent. And, you know, it, it needs to be much, much improved. I agree Especially with you. Often. That is pretty um, much on the offensive side of the ball. Eric, sleeping with a enemy is the offensive <laughs> coordinator. Um, I, I can't – every time I hear his name, I hear him say it. I, I just I, – I can't help it. I do the prime time every time I hear Dion. <laughs> I, just, I mean, I, I hear it in my head. I love Chris Berman. You have no idea. I wanted to be Chris Berman. You have no idea. Yeah, but you're anyway. not. You're not. You're not though. You're not though. <laughs> I've wanted to be Chris Berman so bad. You have no idea. All right, defense you. on the defensive um, side of the ball. Uh, they got a lot of help to me in the secondary um, transfer portal. Really, really worked out for them. That's the thing about this transfer portal. Like, you're just not getting starters. You're getting backup guys that are sliding into these starter positions. And you're and you're getting them from big schools like UCLA got a couple of guys from Oregon, Notre Dame, Georgia Tech. Um, so that's one good thing about this portal is it it improves your overall. They should, have, very, they should have good linebackers. They should, they should have good have, linebackers as well. Very good. Um, yeah, very good linebackers here um, at UCLA on the defense. So it's gonna kind of come down, I think, to the to the, you know, the front, the defensive line, defensive front here for them on just my, how this defense is. My key to the season is, you know, you're the second worst team in the nation in the red zone. And you need to store when you have the opportunity. They just could not get that done last year. Um, well, having said that, and you're going to think I'm crazy – but a key player here is going to be the darn kicker. He's talking about scoring when they have an opportunity. They were seven of 17, no, eight of 17 in field goals last year. You get down there and you miss over 50% of your field goals. Put some points on the board. You can't have that crap. So, like, Whoever it, it, the sophomore it, it, kicker is, back Baggini or Baggini or whatever Baghini or whatever his name is, <laughs> I don't know what the hell his name is. Martin, I don't know. But if he's not any better, he needs to go back to Baghdad. I mean, wait a second, I didn't say that right. <laughs> oh. <God. laughs> I have no idea if that's what he's <laughs> from. Okay. No idea. I'm sorry. That's a bad deal. <laughs> oh, All right. It was just a joke, guys. Just a joke. All right. Just a joke. Yeah. He, oh, he goodness. <laughs> they play at Hawaii. <laughs> Um, open day in the Indiana at home at LSU, Oregon at home, um, at Penn State, Minnesota at home, at Rutgers, open day, Nebraska at home, Iowa home, at Washington, USC, and Fresno State at home. And two of those, the last two are at home. Um, good luck, UCLA. That's <laughs> all I can do. <laughs> okay, is it at LSU? I mean, honestly. Yes, it, it is. Yeah. I mean, it's like, the key game at LSU because – Well, because you're playing Indiana and then you're playing Oregon at home at Penn and then, State. And then at Penn State? I mean, or is it Minnesota at home? I mean, Minnesota at home is, is going to be a key game for them yeah. on October 12th. Yeah. And that Rutgers game will not be easy either. I done cracked you up, hadn't I? <laughs> man, you tore me up, man. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> All right. So, I have their over-under set at six wins. Can they get to six wins? Um, Five. 
Yeah, but that's, that's that's where I think they'll be at. That schedule's just and it's gonna be tough for them this year. <laughs> All right, USC. Oh goodness. What are we doing here with Lincoln Riley? That's what I want to know. Because does, does Lincoln Riley figure out that there are three sides of football, or is he just worried about offense? Uh, I think you know he's going to have an improved defense this year. Um, you know. I'll say this. Their, their talent up front and their D line isn't bad. Like they got Barry Alexander, Elijah Hughes, um, Jamil Muhammad. He returns at one end. But I'll say this as we go to their offense, you know, Miller Moss had better be good. There's no Caleb um, Williams. There's not. And, and here's my biggest thing is you start out the year, you don't start out with just anybody. You start out with LSU right out of the gate against yep. a very pretty good LSU team that's going to be probably in the hunt for the college football playoff. And they just named Miller Moss the starting quarterback, I think, yesterday. Yeah, and, and now they did lose a couple of their backs, but they did get um, Woody Marks from Mississippi State. They got Quentin Joyner. Um, they'll, they'll get their yardage. Woody Marks is a really good back. Um, he played at Mississippi State for a while. Um, at, we remember his time when he played against Kentucky at times. Um, so yeah, this should be a this should be a fun group. But offensive like you, line, they should be pretty good on the offensive but like you, line. But like you said, there, this no Caleb Williams, and you're going to have to be great. Well, I wouldn't say you have to be great. You got to at least be halfway decent. Branch be. is is a potential star. Okay, he is. He uh, is. Zachary, I think is his name. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Um, he's a potential. He's he is lightning fast, and is a potential star. But here's the problem that I, I had an issue with USC last year when when they scored and they won. They done really great. But when they could not score and they faced a defense that was better that was better than their offense, they just looked awful and the defense couldn't stop them. Like it was vice versa back and forth. And to me, that's going to have to improve. Um, now they did bring in DeAntone Lynn, um, you know, as a new defensive coordinator. Um, to me, they're they're not yep. strong in certain positions that they was last year. Um, the secondary should be better. Um, even though they lost Kalen Bullock, um, they got some young Aaron guys. Alexander has got to make his presence known on defense. I mean, he, he just does. does. And, and I feel like that's, to me, that's the key to the season. You know, bring back the turnovers, the takeaways, what USC used to do. Um, now, when you've got not, Elijah Hughes, Jamil Muhammad, and Barry Alexander, I mean, on your defensive front. You've got to make some noise with that. Now I will say, get, and you can't get slaughtered passing the ball down the field with these guys. I mean, you just can't do it. No, and, and you know, at the same time, you can't you can't do what they did a year ago on defense either, giving up big plays every every single play. Like you, you, at some point, you got to make stops, and USC just did not do that a year ago. They didn't even do it in 2022. Like, they haven't been good defensively probably in – like, really good defensively. The whole time probably. Lincoln Riley's been there. They've not been good defensively, no. Um, no. My top transfer – well, my top key player, I think, is Jamil Muhammad. Um, I feel like he has to be disrupted. disruptive. I think it starts up front generating pressure. Um, they, they just could not generate pressure whatsoever at times. They, they struggled trying to get pressure to the quarterback, and I think that's where they need to need to start getting better at. Well, so another defensive side key is they got to create more turnovers. Yeah. Like they 
in 2022, they were a little better at it. And last year, I mean, they just basically stopped creating turnovers, it seemed, for a part of the season. And they have to be able to create some turnovers um, because their defense gets blocked half the time. So um, being able to create that turnover helps them out. So I think um, that is going to be a, a big key key game it's washington has to be you know you've lost to them the last two years um now kaylin DeBoer has now moved on to alabama i think it's lsu but but i do but i do think they need to beat some of the rivals and the teams that, that they've lost to as recently and i feel like this is one of them and, you know even though kaylin DeBoer left to go to alabama i think washington I still think Washington will be good, but they I don't think they'll be on the level that they was a year ago. But that's a game you need to win. And so LSU's right off the bat looking at their schedule. Well, um, and you get that um, and you get the Washington actually the Washington game's on the road. So um that's still yeah. gonna be a tough yeah. game either way. Yeah, Utah Utah State at home, open date at Michigan, <laughs> Wisconsin at home. At Minnesota, Penn State at home, at Maryland, Rutgers at home, at Washington, open date, Nebraska, at UCLA, and then Notre Dame at home. I mean, I'm going to be honest with you, John. That's a tough schedule. Yeah, it's pretty tough. When you got LSU, Michigan, then you got Penn State, Washington, Notre Dame, then, like, UCLA, Nebraska, Wisconsin, Rutgers, I mean, that's a tough schedule. So, here's my thing. I have their win total, John, set at eight and a half. Do you think they go over or under? I think it's over. I think it's at eight, like, it stays at eight. I'll be honest with you. I think it's under, and I think they go eight and four. That's where I, that's where I, I think, think USC eight goes eight and four. That, that is a tough schedule for them, and I think USC goes eight and four and is in that five, six range in the Pac-10. Yep. First year. I mean, Big Ten, the first year, Pac-10. It is the Pac-10. Yeah, now. <laughs> with the with the teams in it, it's I'm gonna start calling it the Pac-10. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Washington. Let, let, let me give we got you this two stat. more teams here. Let me give you this stat: Washington played for the national championship in the Final Four of their college football playoff. USC never got to experience that. Notre Dame, Texas, Florida. Oklahoma, Florida State, Tennessee, Penn State, Wisconsin, Miami, and Texas A&M never got there. But Washington got there. Yep. And they played for the national championship. Yep. And does that not tell you there's a few of those teams and names in there that have really dropped off the map and Washington's went by them? And I'll I mean, say that to, what Kalen DeBoer did at Washington the last few years with Michael Penix Jr. was flat amazing, to be honest. Um, I don't think there was very few people that done a better job. I mean, maybe Jim Harbaugh, not even – I mean, uh, and Kirby Smart because he won a title. I mean, but, I mean, outside of them two – I think Kellen DeBoer, I mean, I talked about Ryan Day's record at 59 and 8. Kellen DeBoer's been better. I mean, the last couple of years. So, I mean, now he's not there anymore. Mm -mm. And they're moving to the Big Ten. Well, and, I do and think you're going to see a little bit of a slide, a little bit. But they still have a lot of talent, and I think this team is going to be a very good team. 
my thing is, you know, you lost a lot of your receiving core. Roma Dunze, Chicago. Jalen Pope went to New England. You had Jalen McMillan go to Tampa Bay. You you that yep. combined for I think three thousand yards a year ago. Um, you know you, you lost Jack Jack Westover from uh, there. He went to Seattle. Then they so, lost Jeremy Jeremy Bernard to Alabama, which he was a. But they bring in Jet Fish and they bring in Arizona's offensive coordinator, and Arizona had yeah. a good year last year. Um, and people yeah. and people don't know what Jed Fish walked into when he went into Arizona either. Yeah. So, I mean, they they also, on the offense, brought in a guy by the name of Will Rogers. Yep. Has done a little bit at quarterback under Mike Leach. <laughs> Just a little. Led the Just SEC two straight years in a row passing. Um, you know, so they're not going to slow down a lot on the offensive side of the ball. I do think they fall back a little bit, um, but I don't think it's going to be a massive amount or anything. Um, like you said, the receiving core lost a ton. Um, the offensive line will probably still be pretty decent here. Um, and then Let's go to the defensive side of the ball for Washington. Maybe you've heard of Belichick, the name Belichick in Stephen football. Stephen Belichick. So his son, Stephen Belichick, is the defensive coordinator now at Washington. And Belichick, Patriots Belichick, is doing some is there and is helping out off the, on the side and doing some stuff because he's not coaching this year and I heard him say that he's there and he's going to help his son this season. Yeah. So just to give you guys a heads up on that if you see Belichick well, on the side I think, I think their biggest strength is to me is going to be their linebacker core, you know. Um Carson Bruner will be back. Um Patali will be back. Um, so I think their strength to me is their linebacker. And they have enough talent in the secondary to be pretty good. You know, they lost Jabbar, Jabbar Muhammad to, to Oregon. That was a really big loss. Um, Jordan Shaw, um, but he, he's going to be – he's from Indiana. He comes in. Um, so they should be pretty good on defense, but it needs to be at least a little bit better than it was a year ago. It, at times, it they just gave up a lot of plays. It, the biggest Elijah problem, Jackson um, should be a good corner. That's that's why I say the key to the season is generate a pass rush. They gave up so many first downs last year; it was just they, they just got yeah. improved because the offense is going to do what it does. But you got to you got to make some. You got to be stingy on defense sometimes. Well, so the key player for me, I'm just going to say his name again, Will Rogers. I think it's um, fifth year senior Will Rogers. I really do. Um, transferring in from Mississippi State, graduated from there, had a four year career at Mississippi State, was the two time SEC lead passing yard leader. Um, he has thrown for over 12,000 yards, 94 touchdowns in four seasons, just 28 interceptions um, with all of those passing attempts and all of those yards. I mean, he, he throws the ball 40 to 50 times a game. He has for Mike Leach down there um, at Mississippi State. I think he's going to be an absolute key player for this Washington team to continue um, their their dominance. My key game is Michigan. Um, Washington should be 5-0. and you, you know, you bring Michigan back. You have a rematch of the national championship from a year ago. That's going to be pretty you, good. I, I, that's going to be a good game to watch. And it's at Washington. Um, yeah. You know, 
which Washington, to me, still has to face Iowa, Penn State, and Oregon on the road, and Indiana, which would be improved. But they should be 5-0 and um, going into Michigan. And to me, that's a that's that's a big game because I don't think Washington's going to win the Big Ten. Um, I think they're not – they won't be as good as they was a year ago um, with Kale and DeBoer leaving. Now, they'll be really good under Jeff Fish. Jeff Fish always has a really good – Plan he he turned Arizona around, but um, their schedule sets up like this: they play um, Weber State, Weber State, Eastern yeah. Michigan home, Washington State home, Northwestern home. At Rutgers won't be a, a, a slap in the face, but it's a winnable game. Michigan at home, at Iowa, open day at Indiana, USC home. At Penn State, UCLA home, open date, and at Oregon. The only real true test that they really miss is Ohio State. I've got their over under set at eight. Eight, yeah. For this year, eight. What you say, what Lamar Jack? I think they go. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Um, I got their over under set at eight. I believe that this team will go eight and four this year in the Big Ten, first year. That's fair. So our last, this is our last uh, one. Yeah, our last one is Wisconsin, and with Wisconsin, I'm going to bring up a. Um, little stat here. So in the BCS era and the college football playoff era, both in both eras, Wisconsin has the most wins of any team that did not make the BCS or the college football playoff. I just thought it was kind of, so we talk about Penn State not getting there. We talked about um, a few of these other teams not getting to the big one. Wisconsin is another team that has had a lot of wins but could never get to, a, you know, the BCS, could never get to the college football playoff. Luke Fickle in his second year. Where do you think well, they go here? Well, you start out with the offense. Like last year it wasn't good. Running game was inconsistent. Passing game was bad. They, they, they just never could put it together. Um, you know, and that's not fair to Luke Fickle because, you know, he had to come in and, and take over from Paul Christ's era and, and had, to, had to change a lot of things. You know, they lost Graham Mertz to Florida. Um, he was a big loss in their quarterback mm -hmm. room. Um, so their offense to me – has to be much improved if they want to move forward. You know, I remember a day when Wisconsin was just run, run, run. Ron Dane, Davis, um, all the great run, stale of running backs that Wisconsin has always had. And Wisconsin, Wisconsin is known for running the football. Um, now, they passed some. They've had some really good, great um, receivers in the past. But Wisconsin is more known for running the football and, and grinding games out. And I feel like that's where they need to get back to. Tyler Van Dyke, is he the guy to be I able to get this passing game is. going? I think he is. I think he's, you know, the main guy, you know. Now, he ain't going to run like, like the quarterback last year, but I feel like he'll crank it down the field a lot more. Um, he, problem with Tyler Van Dyke, and, and people don't realize, it's his interception rate. You're gonna have to quit throwing the ball, throwing it to the other team. Like well, <laughs> twelve interceptions, twelve that's, interceptions. That's not ago. what you're supposed to do. No, like it was really bad last year for Miami. So um, <laughs> it need, it need, it needs to it needs to be better. So and, and defensively, like it needs to commit to run the ball a little more too. Well, on the defense, it. It was effective, but it just wasn't what Wisconsin football normally is. You know, um, the pass rush, um, they got John 
John Pass from um, William and Mary. Um, he's a really good pass rusher. Um, Jake Chaney should be really good. Um, the linebackers should be really, really good. Um, you know, problem with Wisconsin defense is stop letting quarterbacks just drive and get, get in their groove like they did last year. Like, they allowed offenses to, to average 61% passes. And that's not going to win you football games. Yep. Especially when your offense is not that good. And, and which offense wasn't that good last year. And, and you got to be you got to be better. Um, and I think – now, I'm not going to say here and say Tyler Van Dyke's going to be um, football Jesus, as they call it in Notre Dame. But at the same time, at least I feel like he'll move the ball downfield and get some downfield throws. I think, I think he's a key player, though, I for think sure. He's a key, Tyler Van Dyke. I think he's a key player for this, for this program and, and whatnot. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so key game. Alabama. And I say this wow. because okay. they play Western Michigan, they play South Dakota, and then they play Alabama at home. And That's then they a have home open, too, right? That's a yeah, home game, right? And they have yeah. an open date, and then they go to USC. Purdue at home, at Rutgers, at Northwestern, Penn State at home, at Iowa, open date, Oregon at home, at Nebraska, Minnesota. And I say that the Alabama game – because with with what they got coming in with in the second half of the year, they have a you know the trip to Wisconsin, um, and then they follow that up with Alabama. To me, for Luke Fickle, this would be a monstrous win um, for his program. And you know we've seen what he did at Cincinnati. We saw what he could do with them. Um, this would be big. And I'm not saying Alabama is going to be the Alabama. Of Nick is, it a flex? is that a flex if they can beat Alabama at home? I think it is. Beat. Here's my problem, though, is if they do beat Alabama, they're going to say, well, that ain't the, the Alabama that, that was there with Saban. Right. And, and to me, that's not fair to say. Yeah, with, that's what people are going to say. So that's, that's why I think gonna, that's a flex. That's what they're going to say. But to be fair, he recruited all those guys. Except the guys that Kalen DeBoer a few. brought in, brought yeah. in by himself, yeah. you know. And, and right. to be fair, that w- wouldn't be fair to. But but you know how fans are. That's what they're going to do. Over under seven, seven wins. What um, do you think? I think it's seven. I mean, that that rough stretch towards the end of the year is pretty tough. All right, so there you have it. We are. At the end of 18 teams here um, for the Big Ten. Now, real quick, championship game and winner. Who do you think you have in the championship game? Remember, there is no divisions. My championship game and winner, I got Ohio State and Oregon, and I got Ohio State winning the whole thing. I got – well, I got, I, got, I, got, I, got the Big I got Ohio State and Oregon as well, and I have went back, forth, and back and forth with this and sometimes i want to say oregon and sometimes i say ohio state i'm currently on the ohio state bandwagon for this game but gosh i want to pick oregon so bad well, here, here's the here's the thing you're going to have you're going to ohio state Oregon's going to play early in the year you're going to have a revenge game either yeah. way beyond this game but that's true one team's going to win and then they're going to play each other again and that's somebody's gonna have a sure. In my player, um, I'm going with Dylan Gabriel, and I know that's probably. I think Dylan Gabriel is going to have a fantastic season. I think that he is going to be. I look for Dylan Gabriel to be one of the three or four at the Heisman presentation. I'm not saying he's winning it, but I'm saying he's there. That's my sleeper choice is Dylan Gabe. That not many people's talking about. Who you got? Um, I think I'm gonna go Judkins from Ohio State. I think 
I think he's going to have a big year for Ohio State. Um, All right. How many teams? Whoops. I didn't change this. From, I didn't change this from last time. Give me just a second. I will change that. That was the last time. I'm sorry. I forgot. Change one. Now my computer's telling me my battery's running. Yes, I know. <laughs> All right, Big Ten. How many Big Ten teams make the new college playoff, 12-team playoff? I think the most you're going to get is two, I think. See, I think three. I think I think Oregon State and Washington are – good grief. Oregon and Ohio State both make it. And I think Penn State gets in this time. I really do. I think I think, the I think there's I think there's a good chance for them. I think the Big Ten will see three teams in, and I mean there is an outside chance that a, an Iowa or a um, Michigan make a fourth team. I'm not going to say that they can't get a fourth team. There is an outside chance they can, but my pick. Preseason is three teams. Um, now, real quick, Florida State, Georgia Tech on Saturday open the season in Dublin. Pick me a winner. FSU. But I, but I will say that Georgia Tech will be much improved, um, especially with Brent Key, what he's doing with them, and Haynes King. Um, they should be a lot more fun to watch this year. Which they was fun last year, but they should be more. If if Georgia Tech was going to win this game, this is the time to do it because it's a neutral game. You're going to have half and half fans, and and you're going to have the spotlight on you nationally. Um, I, I just I think to myself, what would happen if FSU lost this game? This would be really devastating right out of the gate. All right, to close the show out, go to Home Field Apparel. Check them out. Use our code CSCAST. You can also find that at greenvillesportsmedia.com. You can find the link to use. There's over 180 teams. And at the bottom, it's scrolling there. Follow College Sportscast on Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, or there is our Twitter handles, X handles, right there on the screen. Go follow us. We would appreciate it. And we hope you enjoyed our Big Ten preview. Next week, we will do a group of five. We'll do a group of five and independents. And we are not going to run through every single team. We're going to do about the top three that we think out of each one. And, um, we, won't be, and we won't be attending Baghdad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Sometimes you got to make light of stuff, you know. Okay, oh, yeah, was, yeah, that, that, was pretty, that was pretty good. All right. <laughs> <All right. laughs> we will see you guys next time. Have a good night. Have a good night.